I promised everybody who watches this channel, which is not too many people, but that's okay. I promise you a very special episode today, and I'm about to deliver. Look at who I've got. I've got, uh, we're going to talk about Motorhead Ace of Spades, and I've got a, a couple of, uh, a couple of big rock, big Motorhead fans here, some, some great guys we've got. For me, he's up in the, in the, the top left. I don't know where he's going to be to anybody else, but we got Jason McMaster from Dangerous Toys, Broken Teeth, Igniter. Watchtower, some Watchtower shows coming up. Yeah, we got to get, get to it. Uh, maybe you can talk about some, some Watchtower gigs at the end. And uh, Dirty Looks coming up too. Jason has yeah. got his, uh, he's got his, uh, what do they say? He's got something in his, 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 he's stoking the fires or he's got his rods in the fires, stoking the embers. Many, What's that many, expression? Many irons in the fire. Many irons in the fire. That's what I was looking for. And then uh, down here on the bottom, we've got the Big Mick. This is Chris McLernan. From uh, one of my favorites from, from Saigon Kick. He played on my two favorite Saigon Kick albums. He's nice. got a project called Canal. Uh, he's got Big Mick in the surf. And uh, he's, uh, he's a very well-rounded musician and a big Motorhead fan. And yeah. this came up. I don't know if, uh, if you guys remember this. Chris uh, sent me a message, I don't know, maybe a, a year ago. I think it was in September, October, November, towards the end of last year. I, I believe he had tears in his eyes in, in the message. And he said, sir, can you, I, I want to talk about Motorhead. Can you, can you help me? Let's, let's talk about Motorhead. And I said, yes, I can. And uh, so I, I sent Jason a message and he said, yeah, he could. But then I think that was around the time that you, Jason, were um, filling in for everybody with doing with uh, Armored Saint and accepting everything. And it kind of got pushed. To, and then it was Christmas, I think, shortly after. So it kind of got put to the back burner. And then I've been doing these episodes talking about all these records that I've been buying lately. And let me show it here. There you go. And um, so I, I talked about Overkill and Bomber recently. Hold, hold yours up for a second again. I'm missing the motorhead above Filthy's head. Correct. So yeah. my version. I don't think I've Fil ever seen that. Filthy has it, a hat. Do you, do you have it there? Oh, it you. Hat. Yeah, of course. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen that version. Is one on bronze and one on something else? This Mine is, is bronze. bronze. It's a, it's a is reissue, bronze. but it's bronze. Yeah. This yeah. is bronze as well. It's mercury bronze. Yeah. Mine was mercury. My, my vinyl copy was on mercury. It says mercury right here and bronze right next to it. Yeah. I think that's uh, what mine, mine is BMG. Uh, okay. Uh, so cheap. then, so I've been. The mergers. This is probably a merger. All right. Like uh, and then, so, um, so I've been on this kick late, lately, and I was going to do Ace of Spades sometime coming up soon. I thought. Why not mix it up a little bit and get some insight from some uh, some real fans? So I sent uh, McLearn uh, and McMaster. The two mix, yeah. Right. I, I sent uh, both of you guys. And what you don't know of each other, you both answered very enthusiastically with uh, exclamation points, which are, are that's always a big thing for me. I like when people are enthusiastic and use exclamation points. You yeah. uh, you responded promptly and uh, enthusiastically, and here that's, we are. And here we are. All right. So, so well, uh, if any anybody who watches these things before, you know how this works. Uh, will I and we this time will talk about our, our Motorhead history and our general thoughts on this album and anything else uh, these guys want to add, and then we'll go through it track by track. So, uh, just starting first of all, um, I'll, I'll start with Jason since he's up in the top. Um, what, what's your uh, your general thoughts on Ace of Spades? First, if, if you're a member, the first time you heard it, you bought it. How old were you? What memories you have you attached to it? Give me, give me the, your Ace of Spades story. I uh, moved to Austin, Texas from Corpus Christi in 1980, the year this came out. This uh, was around, it, it, it had come out just before uh, uh, Blizzard of Oz, right? Because they were supporting Ace of Spades. Um, in, they were supporting Ozzy touring at the Ace of Spades record. Uh, and um, people were starting to, I mean, people were really excited because Crazy Train was on major AOR radio every 10 minutes. Crazy Train was mm -hmm. on the Crazy Train. And so I was all about that. I mean, that made me want to listen to the radio and, and it didn't take long for me to go, oh, yeah, I don't need to listen to the radio. I, I'm going to buy, I, now I know I'm going to go buy this record, but 
thank you, Major AOR Reporting Radio, for going, hey, you need to go buy this record. Uh, back to Ace of Spades, I, was, I, I felt late to the game because it was in, sometime in 81. I had a little band. I was playing bass. I had just started singing. I think I was 17 or something. It sounds about right. 16 or 17, I was uh, at rehearsal. We rehearsed in, at a buddy of ours' house and uh, in the garage. And then we'd, we'd hang out in the living room around the record player, you know, before and after and just listen to records and talk about this thing called heavy metal. And uh, my drummer, Michael Solis, who's one of my oldest friends still to this day, uh, we're very close. Uh, he brought Ace of Spades over and was like, you guys got to, you know, that whole, you got to hear this, you know. And we were glued to our chairs, just like staring at the record cover. And while we were, we couldn't believe that, you know, we had, what? You know, what? And then, and then we quickly learned that there were three records prior or four or five records prior to this, you know, with... Um, they're out of order. Overkill, Bomber, On Parole, uh, and many versions of the first record, The Watcher, you know, whatever. There was all, all this uh, other material that was from the late 70s. And then I, I, it wasn't even at that point that I knew anything else about Ian Kilmister being part of, uh, you know, some psychedelic band by Hawkwind rights and or that motorhead was actually a song that lemmy wrote when in hawkwind and had hawkwind record it and play it when he was in the, anyway so we're just blown away at all of this and we fell in love with the lyrics uh completely blown away by the whole thing so this would have been i'm gonna guess you know late 1980 or early 81 maybe by summer of 81 it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly but it was around that time that you know not long after the record was still fresh and they had just come through uh with ozzy and people were talking about you know mind mind blown by this power trio from england uh and uh, i have friends who bought swag from that show motorhead shirts and uh, they were fans, and it was rampant. It started to, you know, become a, a popular uh, uh, conversation between me and my peers. I remember we in art class in high school, my junior year it was it was that time, junior senior junior year, I think, senior year. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, I had an uh, art class with David Roach, the singer for Junkyard, Junkyard. who is now my next door neighbor. So <laughs> I'm pointing oh. at David right now. So we had art class in 80 or 81 or whenever the hell that was. And in interviews and such, and in public speaking, you know, question or Q and A's or whatever, he, he name checks me, David Roach is who I'm talking about. He name checks me and credits me as the man who turned him on to, to Motorhead. And it would have been Ace of Spades that I would have turned him on to because, like I said, I, it took me a while to figure out that there was Motorhead recordings prior to Spades, right? So it would have been, you know, I brought it to school. I was like, you got to hear this. Oh, you're a punk rock guy. Oh, you're a, blah, you know, and he's, you know, we, we would listen to, you know, all kinds of music in the in the classroom via our teacher being cool about it and uh any anyway so that that's kind of the beginnings of it i was blown away i i can't i can probably say this since this was my first introduction to to the band motorhead and and lemmy uh the lemmy wor the world of lemmy um this might be my favorite motorhead record because I feel like this is kind of, uh, uh, you know, high, I love High and Dry, Def Leppard's High and Dry. This is kind of like the High Same and Dry. 
I, I love obsession by UFO. I think it's a peak. I, th I think that that was kind of as good as it was going to get other than Strangers of the Night, but that's another episode. I feel like back to Motorhead that No Sleep Till Hammersmith is a, this excellent collection of stuff on spades, but that goes back and grabs, you know, the older stuff and brings it in and like introduces you to it. We right. got into girl school, me and my buddies, right after this, and we heard, the first time I heard Bomber, it was fucking girl school playing Bomber. And we covered the girl school version of Bomber <laughs> and that band of, of crazies that I had at the time, 16, 17 years old. So the, the, the point is, is, to cover a lot of ground here, I'm just going to stick my head out and go tie between the live album, you know, Hammersmith and then, and then spades for sure. And I could talk for an hour just myself. I've got handwritten on yellow legal, uh, paper over there. Lemmy wrote me a song. I gave him the idea for a song and he gave me, uh, he, he goes, check your mailbox. And I was on the phone with him. Yes. I've, used to call Lemmy and he sent Please. me lyrics in like a week. He sent me handwritten lyrics signed. Wait, was this the, during the no, Operation it, Rock and Roll After tour? December of 91. Oh, okay. So sure. Yeah, I have his business card. I, yeah, I, I miss the guy. I'm, Lemmy had a business card. We weren't close. We were not close, to be clear. But he was the kind of guy that if he respected you, he would give you his card. And it had handwritten his address and phone number on the back yeah it goes limi el beso profundo that's what it says uh, <laughs> oh that's great and just going back a little bit to uh the junkyard thing with lifer the their kind of recent song lifer that was about that right that was that was like was that inspired by you or something to do with motorhead or you or something they they the guys in junkyard say that it's inspired by me by story by way of a story they told that uh brian baker was because brian baker still writes with those guys and he's busy with a million other bands like he always has been but uh bad religion i think is his main thing uh but he still goes to their studio and writes with uh tim and todd and uh putting together tunes and yeah, what's going on? Oh, I'm going to, you know, Tim, oh, yeah, talk to Jason McMaster. He's got a podcast and blah, blah, blah. And it's, oh, how's he, you know, Brian, oh, how's he doing, man? He's a, he's a lifer. Says it right on his Facebook. It just says one word, lifer. And, and Brian goes, that's the name of our new song. Oh, all right, there it is. I always thought, um, not to get too far off track, but I always thought Life Sentence from the first Junkyard album could have could have been a Motorhead song. For sure. Very, very motorhead. For sure. Uh, they're, they're a lot like Junkyard, uh, not to go long, but uh, they're like Leonard Skinner meets Motorhead yeah. with, with a whole heavy dose of rose tattoo sauce. Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, 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 that's good. And that first album is yeah. great. Uh, all right. And, and uh, mm -hmm. how about... Sorry, go ahead. Were you going to say something, Jason? No, that wasn't me. Oh, I thought. sorry. I thought I was cutting you off. Uh, all right, Chris, uh, how about you? Any uh, memories of, of Ace O Spades? Oh, extremely clear ones. Um, kind of same thing as Jason. High school, it was towards the end of 80, and I was in New Jersey, and there was a show on called, I think, Rock World, and Riot did the theme song, right? So they'd, I'd always tune in because they might put a hard rock band on or they might put Asia on, you know, ooh, look out. You know, we're, we're crossing into rock and roll here. So out of nowhere, they say, tonight on Rock World, Motorhead. And I'm just like, huh? Because all I'd heard from was Circus Magazine had a little blurb talking about what was coming up in the new wave of British heavy metal. Talking about Def Leppard, Praying Manus, you know, um, Samson. And they said Motorhead, which was this cross between punk and metal that no one is, like, no one is ready for. So I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. So this comes on and, you know, this says Motorhead, Ace of Spades, you know, as the phase up. And so the bass starts. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Then you see, I think Filthy had those shark's teeth in the, in the bass drums. Yeah, I was like, okay, that's pretty rad. And then um, the song starts. I'm like, holy fuck, they're going fast. What the fuck is going on? I was just like, nah, 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 glued to the TV. And then he starts singing. I was like, holy shit, I've heard nothing like this in my entire life. 
I got to go find this. So next day I went to the mall and grabbed it. And that was that sunk right in at that moment. Would you say it's your favorite Motorhead album or uh, where, where would you rank it in there? Not, not give me a number, but is it, yeah. is it at the top? Yeah, I was absolutely, the top? yeah I'm, I'm with Jason. Like the uh, Hammersmith is amazing just because it's kind of the document of what they're doing at the time. Um, and like you hear the version of Bomber that's on that and the version of Bomber that's on the record. And it's like, yeah, wh how do you make Bomber faster? Well, they did. Um, and it just seems like the whole show is like sk almost skidding off the rails and uh, it's, you know, it's just blazing loud in there. So I love that one as a document, but as a like material and execution, Ace of Spades in the top, uh, still love Bomber, still love Overkill. Um, I love some of Iron Fist, uh, love 1916. There's some of Orgasmachan I love, rock and roll. You know, they get, they get a little spotty from then on out. But as far as like Pentultimate would be uh, Ace of Spades, right? no doubt. That's um, something else. That's a good point. I remember when, uh, like you said, spotty. Jason, um, and by the way, Jason, for anybody who's watching, Jason has a podcast called Talk Louder. And when, when you did, Jason, when you were filling in for Armored Saint and Accept last year, I, I watched uh, I watched a lot of those episodes of, of your podcast, and I think it was during the Accept episode, David Glessner, your co-host, he was asking you about, you know, or you were talking about the preparation for it, what you needed to do or something, you know, and they gave you a set list. And I think you said something along the lines of you were, I guess you were on the plane and you weren't really familiar with their, their more, their newer stuff, their more modern stuff. Um, so, you know, you, you knew Fast as a Shark, of course. and. Right. You know, London Leather Boys. I don't know if they were doing that or not. Yeah, um, we did. yeah, we did that. All right, and um, so you you mentioned that you kind of uh, you know didn't pay as much attention to accept you know in their later years as you did earlier. And I guess it's the same as you get older or as bands get older, especially if you like them a long time ago. You you tend to I don't know if dislike them, but you lose interest. You you know you don't know the songs as well. You don't maybe sing the lyrics as much. Um, did, did either of you guys ever get that with Motorhead? Did Motorhead ever, or at what point did, did, did Motorhead kind of not fall out of favor, but, um, cause I mean, I, I, I kind of, the last Motorhead album that I loved was We Are Motorhead in 2000. Uh, and they put out five or six albums after that and they were okay, but I never got into them. Were, were you guys kind of the same? Yeah, for me, I went, and I went back and researched, it's like, what changed? You know, like, because it was really good when uh, Campbell and Wurzel got in there. I was like, okay, what changed? So I looked on the records where Wurzel leaves, there's like a line in the sand in the quality of the material to me, because it just seems Wurzel was a better writer. All my favorite songs from that era have Wurzel as a writer. All the ones like afterwards, mm, there's spotty things here and there. And let me, let me, let me, Mickey D's a great drummer. And I love Phil's Wawa work, but you know, it's just the, the songs are not as good as they were with Wurzel. They just aren't to me. Mm. Yeah, for me, I, I and I'll get to you in a second, Jason. I was just going to add, uh, trying to pinpoint what what changed. For me, I didn't really like, uh, and I know a lot of people have the opposite opinion of me, I didn't really like Metal Motorhead. I, I didn't like, you know, the heavy, yeah. like Inferno. And, and again, not that it was a bad album, but I didn't, I liked Motorhead. I liked the rock and roll kind of Motorhead. And, and um, you know, I think with Inferno especially, they, they were more like a metal band than a rock and roll band. I think Teach You How to Die, I think, is the opening song in Inferno. And it's not a bad song, but it's, um, this is a strange thing to say, but it's too heavy. I think Motorhead shouldn't be that heavy. Motorhead should have more groove and bounce and, and rock and roll feel. Uh, Jason, what, what do you think about this? I, I, think you're, I think you're kind of reading my mind, uh, and, and I also feel like... Uh, uh, Chris just said the word swing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, that's what I thought you said. And uh, that's all that, that's all Motorhead is. If you're, if you're familiar with the early uh, Motorhead, and I think like I, I've already covered it, but Ace is, you know, Ace of Spades is kind of the record, not just the song. It's kind of like this peaking moment of, um, you know, you take Bomber and Overkill and all the the groovy little ditties that they, they had, like Damage Case and and um, right. you know, I'm not your sister. Yeah, right. I'll be I'll be your sister. Uh, your sister all, yeah. all of that, even Lawman and whatever you know, where it's there's a lot of uh, 
The zoom got a boom got yeah, a, a real shim, groove. A lot of shimmy shimmy cocoa pop going on and little like ooh, doo, 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 doo. there's a lot of like rock and roll feel, you know, yeah. Boom, yeah. Boom, boom, yeah. But when you're going you know, it's it's tutti fruity. Totally is. Or a bum yeah. bam, 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 bam. I mean, that's swinging like a mofo. Yeah, that's bluegrass almost. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you're what, right. what was that you were singing, Mick? Was that Fast and Loose? Uh, or Lift the Wind? I think uh, I'll lift, lift, I think Lift the Wind is doing it again. No, it was, it was uh, Dance, no? Dance. Yeah, just dance. There you yeah, go. Or, or fi good, good Fire, singing, Fire. Right? Fire, 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 man. Yeah, fire, no, fire. That was the yeah. God, they went faster than motor than Ace of Spades. How did they do that? You yeah, know? we'll we'll get into that. I I have a, a few things that about that. Um, but but yeah, just so keep, I, just keep in mind that yeah, I think that you're onto something when you say there's a metal motorhead, and then yeah. there's this firm grip in blues and swing and and even sure. even old country and and things like that that have this kind of you know. You know, the old Little Richard and, and Chuck Berry thing for sure. And that was Lemmy's Creed. That's what, that's what he, that was his first love. So um, I, I, I would like to add this, and I'm, I'm not patting myself on the back here. I was charmed enough to be able to stand uh, in front of the man, uh, I think Taylor, I think Filthy was standing there with him, but he was had his eyes on other things. We were uh, in the lobby of the hotel. I think it was Salt Lake City. And it's like day one of the Operation Rock and Roll, and I'm, we're just getting chatty. And uh, Lemmy's kind of like, you know, what do you think about this conglomeration? of You know, you got you guys, you got Metal Church, you got us, and then you got... Alice Cooper, he he's not metal. Judas Priest has rock moments, but they're metal. And then, you know, your guys are a boogie rock band from Texas, and Metal Church is a metal. You know what? What? This is is this weird to you? I go, I go. Well, if they call it a heavy metal tour, they're they're going to get dirty looks from me uh, because. I'll just start with you. You you guys are not a metal band. You guys are a blues band on 10. And he reaches out and shakes my hand without just didn't wince, didn't didn't think anything. He just stuck his hand out and goes, "That's a good man right there." And he shook my hand. And at that point, I I didn't wasn't asking for his respect. I was just he asked a question, I answered, he shook my hand. The rest is history. Because it, it wasn't like we were angry to be there, just to be clear that, you know, these bands were about to celebrate rock and roll on a tour. Uh, but it was interesting, the, the, the differences between the bands and we were just, it was quirky. And we just had our own review there on day one. But blues band on 10. So that goes with what we were just talking about. Yeah. Well, look at the covers they did. Louie Louie, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they did some interesting covers that, that are not, they're not metal, that's for sure. They weren't doing, yeah. you know, uh, Blue Cheer songs. So that would have been, yeah, that's not really metal. But yeah, and even, the, and even the heavy metal covers they did later, like Breaking the Law and, and you know, they yeah. did, they, but the, you're right. Again, they did ACDC and they did, you know, they did, when they did covers, they were just these fun uh, tribute albums, I believe. Yeah, and, uh, and and it was still they they didn't really sound metal to me when they did them because it it was you know they were trying to put that swing in in a song whether it had it or not. Yeah, right. Couldn't help. I, I about their covers. I talked about this with Chris some time ago. I hated their 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 Metallica covers. They did Whiplash and Enter Sandman. I think it was. Did Enter Sandman? I, sure, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like either of those. I I just thought Motorhead doing. Metallica. I know that's probably a match made in heaven for heaven for some people. I yeah. I really just didn't like it. But I I like their yeah their their more rock covers. Yeah, like Chris said, beer drinkers and Hellraisers, and Louie Louie and uh, Please Don't Touch is one of my. That's right. Oh my God, that's a fucking awesome song. I don't care if it's a cover or or not. That's that's a amazing Motorhead song. I'll call is, it a Motorhead song. 
Is nine 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 a cover? Nine 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 emergency. It yeah. might be. It's got to be. It doesn't. Yeah, I don't. I think it is. It's it uh, good, you know, because it's girl school and them, so it seems like a good idea to do them both. Fast and, Eddie sings that, right? That's Fast Eddie on vocals on Emergency. I think. How about Stand by Your Man, or is that just Wendy by herself? That's a cover. No, they they did the duet. Right. Yeah, that was a duet. So and still, th that's country. I mean, I get it. They're being, aha, it's ironic. It's Wendy O. Williams, but no, they knew the song in his country. Yeah, and they yeah. did it. And, and in my opinion, it's, they don't sound good. It's an oddity. Yeah, that's it's it. really off. Uh, but I think that that's what the idea was to be yeah. this. It's very punk, you know, for them to, even if they were using their best, cleanest singing voice, it was just sounded like drunken pirates. <laughs> uh, and that's okay. And I think that that's what, to some, it could have been super charming to, and, and the, the gist of the joke be the irony, right? The satirical, uh, aud audible version of, the, of that is nothing. You've never heard uh, Stand By Your Man done like this before. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, Let me a, roll that will surprise you, yeah. Yeah, and and just uh, to to finish this section, my my history with uh, Ace of Spades is pretty different than your than both of yours. I'm uh, three or four years younger, I think, than you guys. I don't know. Um, so I was I was only ten when this came out, and my first Motorhead record was Another Perfect Day. Oh, such um, a that if yeah, I, had, I know Chris is a big fan. Yeah, of I love that record. Yes. Yeah, me too. Um, and I got that. I don't think it was brand new at the time but it was their current album because i i remember then getting no remorse when it came out um and i didn't actually buy ace of spades until the 90s I, and i never had the record this was only recently that i that i got the the record um and you know so i i had a little bit of a different view on it and i of course i knew jailbait and um obviously the title track and the, the tracks that were on um on no remorse um and a friend of mine called jeff simpsons he he had it or i think his older brother had it so i listened to it but never had it um it's it's not i would say it's not really even close to being my favorite motorhead album i love it and i love it way more now than i did even five years ago but i i and i hate to say overrated and underrated i hate that but um i guess by most people's definition i think it's overrated or, or maybe it's better to say I just don't like it as much as most people, or maybe as much as you would expect me to. Um, like I would put, I can I can think of four that I like better, maybe five. So uh, although I I do like it better now, as I said, than I did a few years ago. But it it just uh, it it came along for me at a weird time. I was I was already well into them by the time I got it. So I had I had a a, a bit of a different take on it. That's not unusual, though. I mean, sometimes, like, you have a band with a big catalog, you don't, and you come in on, let's, it's, let's say it's Iron Maiden, your first record is Fear of the Dark, right? You have a different take on it than me. I got Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden, right? So I was like, that's yeah. my first Maiden record. Or So, like, Ace of Spades, I got it as it came out, you know? So yeah. that was, literally, there was nothing after that, so I couldn't go, oh, like you just said, like you could do now. You know, go look at my, my, uh, my collection. There's lots after Ace of Spades. However... I remember just at that time, you know, what else came out that year? Tom Catton came out that year. Uh, Heaven and Hell came out that year. British Steel. Uh, British Steel, uh, On Through the Night. Um, so it was, you know, pretty good year. But this came out and just was so different than all of them right, immediately. And, uh, and, it's, yeah. and it kind of held that status for me. The, the timeline is very important. You know, it's the same with, you know, we talked with uh, Daniel DK last year from Exciter. And, uh, you know, he's a lot younger than us and he loves 80s Kiss. And it's so strange to me that there are people that love 80s Kiss more than 70s Kiss. But those that do, because I know a few of them personally, they're, um, you know, they only discovered Kiss with Lick It Up. That was their first right. album or right. Asylum or whatever. And so they ended up loving 80s Kiss. Um, right. So, yeah, like, it, it depends on your introduction, where you were introduced to the band. Yeah, it's like your favorite James Bond. You know, it's, it's the first one you saw, probably. Yeah, you could apply that to a lot of things. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, something has a, uh, you have memories tied to something the first time you heard it, first time you oh, yeah. saw it, whatever. It's first uh, first love. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. You, you remember uh, it and, like and, that. Yeah. And, and what about uh, Jason? Maybe this is a little bit different for you because you toured with Motorhead, but discounting that, uh, what about live? How many, how many times have each of you gone to a Motorhead show? I want to say 
five for me. Yeah, we, I think we, I'm we, five as well. Wisconsin, we were supposed to open for them on the uh, Another Perfect Day tour. Wow. And uh, yeah, and they came in and they, the, the club, and Jason will get this for sure, the club was supposed to supplement the PA, augment it. This guy was famous for just ignoring those riders, you know. So Motorhead came in, you know, they're like, yeah, right. You know, they take one look and go, there's no way. So they walk in and uh, whoever the tour manager was, it was like him, Filthy, and somebody else. And the guy pops a cassette in uh, next to the front of house and just goes like this with all the faders. Just, and he just goes, and he brings it back down and goes, uh, did you, um, did you uh, follow the rider? Did you show our specifications? Well, you know, I didn't think, okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. Goodbye, Madison. We'll see you in the office. You owe us the rest of our deposit. We're not playing. Boom, that was it. We're out of here. I was like, mm. whoa. Now, this is before the internet, so fuckers came up from Chicago to see us now in Motorhead's place. They were not real happy about that. Although we played, you know, Priest and Maiden and Scorps and all that. But, and no, there was no explanation. We just got fucking pilloried. But, oh, well. I got to see uh, Brian Robertson might have been the other guy. Yeah. Have the guy. May have. But um, I was just like, Filthy just looks so cool. The, the mustache looked cool. The hair looked cool. You know, he's just like this weird little you know, kind of dude. And they're just like, there's something just cool about him. So I was watching him most of the time. But yeah, they, they'd had none of that mess and they were out of there. He was, uh, he would always wear a, uh, like a leotard one piece. <laughs> well, like, like a, a, with sure. like, like you know the pants but once it got up to the top it was like a split so his chest would show and women wear wear like a little little like top or a halter top and then they put this and it comes up and it comes over like a one you know yeah kind of like Freddie mercury yeah exactly mm -hmm. but yeah exactly same thing but that he would just put that on and that's all he would wear with some wrestling boots he looked yeah. like he was about to go into the wrestling ring is what he looked like when he would walk out. That's fantastic. And that's yeah. what you want. You want, you want something just that matches his personality because he's just yeah. nuts. Uh, and he always had hairspray. He's spraying his hair. Yeah, he, he was a little bit uh, Big, little glam glammy. before yeah. glam or glam before yeah. glam. Mellow. Yeah, he always had uh, his he, hair pushed up. Very, I don't know exactly what part of England he was from, but he was always glammed out. It made me think of, you know, somebody down at the pubs and, you know, Piccadilly or something. You know? right. yeah. And and what about you, Jason? How many, how many times uh, well, around, how many, did you see them a lot? Well, Every well time they to, came be, to, Texas? to be, uh, to be honest, I may have seen them only once. I uh, can't even remember when it would have been before I actually was seeing them every night on that tour. You well, know, you saw them on with Ozzy, so that was that was once. Well, I missed that. Oh, you missed I didn't that one. See ah, that. I, it was ah, like okay, uh, ah. it was like lip service. Everyone who was that that was talking about Motorhead and then my drummer Mike brings over this the record and I was just like, you know, I I have failed. I didn't go. I know what it was is I had missed it. I had I I got right, to town like I couldn't have, I was unavailable. You know, I heard about it too late or, uh, you know, it was right when I was very new to Austin. These were my new friends, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I saw them countless times on, you know, throughout the 90s. And I saw uh, what was, is probably one of their last shows because uh, Lemieux's health was terrible. And uh, they were in Austin, and um, I was in the front row. And he comes out, and you know they they come out and they play uh, three songs, two point five songs, and everyone was being kind of you know like crooked brow, kind of like something's a little. Uh, and right right away they were playing everything really slow, and Lemmy's hands were dragging and fumbling and uh he you know he walked out with a cane and had had assistance in every move uh getting getting up to the mic and uh 2.5 songs in the middle of the song he just did this and someone came out and grabbed the bass and helped him walk off he comes back out with a cane i'm not trying to bum anybody out here I'm just, i remember this this is good. And uh, and and so he comes back out on his own, on his cane, and gives a sincere, gentlemanly apology 
and that he promised that he would do his damnedest to come back and uh, and make it up to us all. And you want to see a thousand grown men shed tears. <laughs> Me being one of them. Sure. Yeah, I can believe it. This, this, it was, was, at, this was at uh, this was at Stubbs, right? No, this is in Austin no? at Emos. Ah, at Emos. I think I remember you posting. This was uh, early. Sure. Yeah, and I I came home and I wrote Never Dead the Broken Teeth song. Ah, oh, that's right. I remember you wrote that song before he yeah. died because it came out after yeah. he died. Yeah. Jason, did, were, did, yeah. did you do the show at Long Beach Arena with um, Motorhead Cooper and were you guys the first ones? It was, it was uh, the night um, Cooper brought out Slash and Duff and Axel and I maybe Izzy to do Under My Wheels. I wasn't there. Okay. Because I, I remember that's what, that was one of the times I saw Motorhead. I think that might have been the, mm, maybe the last time I saw Motorhead. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember when uh, when that final show was, but it wasn't nine months before he passed away. Less, yeah. maybe. Yeah, there's that oh. one clip of them doing Overkill and he's singing Ace of Spades. I was just oh, like, oh, that that was somewhere in Europe. Yeah, that's at a oh, festival, hard. I think. Yeah, yeah. That, that was hard to watch. Yeah, just yeah. that's a that's a fog that I think that he was in that last year. He was, you know, yeah. trying to trying to stand on his own shit. You know. Oh yeah, he was I, I saw them uh, five or six times. First time was or a Gasmatron tour. Wow, I saw that tour. and um, the last time was in 2013 <laughs> in Mexico City, and this was before anybody knew that he had some what turned out to be very serious health problems, and um, <laughs> I th this was really sad. But I remember at the end of that show, like saying that sucked, like they were really bad. Not knowing at the time, you know, how it's obviously understandable. Right. And, um, I remember talking about it with people at the time. I said, man, I've been a Motorhead fan for, you know, for years. But that, that was one of the worst things I've ever seen. And then it was only, I think that was in April or May 2013. And then it was discovered maybe a, a month or two later that he had had, I think, a pacemaker installed mm. prior to, to this show in Mexico City. And I went, that's that's what you know i i put it together that's why they sucked and and uh and he he just seemed very i remember when they played their last song he just walked up the stage and say thank you didn't wave to the crowd and i was thinking wow and then uh but then i found out that he was you know in, in really bad health and uh it kind of made sense so uh yeah that was my last time seeing motorhead 2013 mm. and it was not good but understandably so this sure. probably would have been, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not up on uh, his, uh, the time of his demise. Was it 2014 then? That was 2013. He died in December 2015. 2015, okay. Yeah. yeah like the day after his birthday or something, the day before, one of yeah. the two. Like yeah, his birthday is December 24th. Yeah, He's day one of the, the Christmas few, Eve. I know I'll kiss his birthdays and I know Lemmy's birthday. That's about all I know. Christmas and Scott Ian, Scott Ian's is yeah, because Christmas Scott Ian's is New Year's Eve, so it's easy to remember those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he died December twenty sixth, something like that, twenty seventh. I think you're right. I think it was the day after Christmas, Boxing Day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Uh, all right, are we are we ready to get to the album? We'll go through it track yes. by track. Yes. yes. All right, now, before we start, before uh, Chris entered the chat, and before we started recording, Jason and I were talking. Now, the version that he has, as shown earlier, not only is the cover different, the track listing is different. Do you know about this, Chris? What, what's the first song on Ace of Spades? Ace of Spades. That's right. But Jason will tell you differently. He'll show you differently. And you'll be shocked, I think. Chase is better than the catch. Yeah. Ah, and, and then Love Me Like a Reptile. So Ace of Spades is first one on side two? Correct. Strange, no? I didn't know that. Yeah. I mm, Yeah, no. Mm. So that means strange, I didn't just import. I can tell you that. Strange opening song. I, I can't, you know, yeah. I, I, probably everybody, you hear bite the bullet ending and then it bleeds right into. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Chase is better than the cat. Strange, strange opening. Um, that was the other video they played that night. They played Ace of Spades and Chase is better than the catch. I'm just going, what in the hell? You know, just just hilarious. The other complete other opposite direction, right? This was definitely a, a, more the boogie oh, we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. And uh, wow, Chase has been in the catch as the opener. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, on my version, this is Mercury Bronze. So and this is an goes, American, American this goes, version. This goes Chase, love me like a reptile, shoot you in the back, live to win, fast and loose, and we are the road crew. 
side two, ace of spades, fire, fire, jail bait, dance, bite the bullet, and the hammer. This is how I have always remembered the track listing, guys. Mm, so so um, just those two songs were swapped, uh, Chase and uh, Ace of Spades. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not sure why they would do that because I'm programmed in my brain to think that that's okay. And you guys seem that it, that's weird. I'm looking, yep. for a, I'm looking for a date on here uh, as far as maybe this to make this a reissue. I'm not finding it. Yeah, this is, um, mine is, I got the CD, but I don't have the album anymore. Um, and it's, yeah, Ace of Spades, Reptile, Shooting the Back, Live to Win, Fast and Loose, Road Crew, Fire, Fire, Jailbait, Dance, Bite the Bullet, Chase, and The Hammer. The uh, Hammer. And then Please Don't Touch an Emergency. Ah, uh, yeah. yes, the, I have that on CD too. Yeah, so they course, just yeah. switched the first songs on side A and B then. Yeah, interesting. And I think, you know, uh, if you're going to make an impact, it's the right one to make. Well, I, I, you know, I, I see your point now because Ace of Spades is, unfortunately, I, I hate saying this. I have a bad taste in my mouth when I say this. That's the Ace is the only song hipsters know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's I another thing. A, I, sorry, I, saw, ahead, I, I, saw, I saw Motorhead at Stubbs in Austin during a South by Southwest conference. I don't recall the year. It would have been early 2000s, I'm sure. And uh, Motorhead's on, middle of the day, completely shredding. I think High on Fire open for them. Mm -hmm. And a great gig. And it's, you know, it's the afternoon or whatever, you know. And because it's like a showcase kind of a thing. And um, Motorhead is a great attraction for whatever product, you know, somebody is trying to sell during South By. Because South By is a trade show now. It's not about finding a publisher, a manager, or a record deal. So now that I'm, I'll get off my soapbox and say this, there were at least a hundred, you know, man bun, flip flop wearing skinny jeans, you know, type wearing scarves and shit. And it's 150 degrees outside in the sunshine with their backs turned to the stage on their cell phones, just chatting with friends and whatnot, waiting for them to play a song that they know. Well, the only song they know is Ace of Spades. Of course. And, you know, it's it, the cool thing is, is Lemmy is so cool, is he, he doesn't care. that He's happy that that's all they know. He's not berating anyone for, you know, oh, at least you know one of my songs. That's fine. You know, that was kind of seemingly how the guy was. He he. Let me said he hates that song. He said he's he was he's, so. He said he hated playing it, but he said he understands that people want to hear. Yeah, it. yeah. He'd rather have people at the party than not have them. And if Ace of Spades gets him in the door, that's fine. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. It's like his uh his moment in um the Metal Years decline the Western Civilization Part Two when they ask him about bands like Poison and he's standing on the hill with the lights behind, you know, Hollywood lights underneath him. He's, uh, he goes, yeah, hey, more power to them. That's, I hope they sell a lot of records, you know. I can't, I can't pull that off. I'm glad those guys can do, you know what I'm, he's, this is just an example of how he's kind of slicing and dicing his opinion as to how it goes. Now, he seems to be very, adamant on his opinion and on a lot of issues but these two are small fries they're small things that i think that he doesn't let occupy his brain never did little things like that rock and roll is rock and roll and hey yeah. if you're playing music and you're being creative it doesn't matter what you i don't care what you sound like or what you look like i think he hated dangerous toys music but he didn't have a problem I, 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 rem he I remember he, he, he didn't said, have a uh, problem writing me some lyrics to use or giving me his phone number or you know what I mean. But I don't think he was a fan of my band. That's fine. I, I think he said that that uh, it was just like generic cock rock, some, something like that. He uh, in his book, White Line Fever, there's a nod and he's talking about, you know, the bands in uh, that were on the bill in Operation Rock and Roll. He, he specifically mentions Dangerous Toys saying, yeah, and the singer had red hair and sang real high like Axel. I could tell, uh, you know, I could tell 
uh, it was obvious that that band was, you know, the reasons why that band was all in the same sentence, by the way, that that band, Dangerous Toys, uh, was the apple of Sony's eye at the time, end quote. Now, I didn't think that we were the apple of anybody's fucking eye, but <laughs> but the but just hearing him, you know, I can just imagine him saying that out loud. It was it was kind of funny. I'll I'll, I'll take the verbiage. You know what I mean? I'm not. Yeah, I'll take it. You know. Yeah. And something that uh, getting back to Ace of Spades, the song, um, yeah. it always bugs me when as a fan, it bugs me. Now, you guys maybe as a musician and I understand why it is this way. Um, when, when somebody dies like Lemmy or when Chris Cornell died, every band starting the next day does a tribute and they always do the same song. When Lemmy died, every band was covering Ace of Spades. When Chris Cornell died, every band was covering Black Hole Sun um, and, you know, go on and on for whoever died. And I understand because it's their biggest song and it's the one that I guess as musicians, they know it. But I saw these bands doing uh, Ace of Spades and I thought, fuck, man, do a... Uh, I don't know, uh, the claw. sharpshooter. Or, yeah, the claw. You know what my claw is for. Yeah, <laughs> do, do something. But I understand everybody knows Ace of Spades. But getting back to what Jason said about the, the hipsters, I get it, but I, I can't help that it bothers me just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, because remember, this is the band that Lemmy said, if Motorhead moved in next door to you, your, your oh, lawn would God. die. I mean, that's Motorhead to me. I, I was the only one in my high school who had that fucking record, proudly, and they all fucking reviled me for it. And, and it's just weird now to me that there's a statue of Lemmy outside the rainbow. You know, that Lemmy has become Disneyland. How did that work? You know, he's fucking, they, they were motorhead for God's sake. They looked like they hadn't washed in, you know, eight or nine years. And Michael Palin doing that introduction on, uh, I think it's on Rock and Roll. Where... No, it was at the end. It was tagged on the end of the the Wolf or whatever the last oh, song on Side oh, yeah, One was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, Lord. Yeah, for Bless one, us, these fellows in feet. motorhead. Yeah. Yes. No, these kind of yes, that, I, oh, yeah, fantastic. All right, so so getting to track by track, and just a quick thing, I I checked this, and Jason has, I guess, what is the, uh, this is called the original U.S. version, with wow. Chase is better than the catch. There you go. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I didn't have that. I must have had the import. I didn't yeah. know that until an hour ago. So this is how I know it. The, the the aforementioned buddy of mine, Mike Solis, this is the record that he brought over to in in 80 or 81, whichever it was, brought this to the rehearsal jam session and blew our minds. And then from that day on, I couldn't stop talking about that moment and how it, the rest is history. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, so well, well, we'll go through the the track listing from this one. I think, uh, I think everybody is more familiar with Ace of Spades as the opening song. So, um, yeah, the opening song. We'll go to the track by track now. Uh, what can you say about this one? It's it's uh, it's fast. It's obviously their their you know their their most famous song, their signature song. Uh, it's it's now there was a time when I was very sick of it. I, I never disliked it, but I did get tired of it. But I've in somewhat recent years, I've rediscovered it. I, I feel like I enjoy it now as much as ever or more than ever in the last three, four, five years. Um, just a ripper of a song. That's what I think about Ace of Spades. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's still, it's what introduced it to me, meaning the band. And it's still, um, it's just such a punch in the head. It just, it sounded like nothing I'd ever heard. And it leads off the record, and it kind of encapsulates everything they're 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 about. You know, it's that whole "born to lose, live to win" thing. I mean, there it is, right yeah. there. And then Gambling, it matches the, uh, the the visual of the record cover. You know, kind of fits that too. The whole kind of Western thing that they were going for. Um, so yeah, I, I, I I've always just loved it. I've never gotten tired of it. It's it's fun to play on stage. Um, it's fun to test out a bass in a music store with it. You know, I mean, it's because I had these friends. Uh, God love them, but they they were we were playing Ace of Spades and they would start it with a guitar with and I've sat in for the bass player. So okay, we got to do Ace of Spades and uh, I said okay, cool. And I go over and take the amp because I said let me do this and you take the EQ and just go er, like that. So you make the EQ like this, all the mids, right? And uh, they're like okay. And then I, so I start. I go, you ready? And they go, no, the guitar player. So I said, no, he doesn't. I said that's that's the bass. No way, man, that's a guitar. It's like that's the bass. Watch. And I started like, oh my god, it's. <laughs> It's like now it sounds right. We can't do your fucking homework, for God's sake. 
Yeah, that's yeah, how could they that's when I have a uh, would have a hard time not turning around and leaving. <laughs> because, you know, no offense to your buddies, but you know, uh I I've I've been in the same situation in the same room with uh I'll I'll say other musicians. Uh okay. that think for whom the bell tolls is guitar. Yeah, yep. you're ready. you want to play? Uh, oh, that's funny. You're playing it on bass. All right, let's do it for real. And I go, what are you talking about? Exactly. So There's, There was a rip party at the Hollywood Palladium at some time in 90, 1991. It's on, you can find it on YouTube. And uh, they do For Whom the Bell Tolls. And, and I think it's Lars and James and Slash is playing the on his guitar. And Hetfield walks over, gives him a look like, are you fucking kidding me? Really? And uh, I think Sebastian Bach is singing Someone else. Oh, I remember that. That that was at the Cat House. No, no, no. This was at the Palladium. Oh, okay. I, I remember one from the Cat House, and Faith No More, I think, was involved too. Oh, yeah, yes. Thinking. Well, they, that's the one. It was that was that show, but it wasn't the Cat House. Cat House was too small to hold this crowd. It was fucking okay. crazy. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, Faith did. Uh, War Pigs and Ozzy came out. Oh. So yeah, it was a fun night. But yeah, I remember it had the look on Hetfield's face, just like just shaking his head, like you fucking idiot, you know. Fucking L.A. poser fuck. You know, it's just <laughs> just coming off his face in waves. <laughs> Hilarious. Mm. Uh, Jason, any uh, quick, quick thought about the, the title track? The title, the title track, which is not the first song on my version, I want to underline that you? again. Yeah. So uh, it was, uh, sure, it was the title track, but, you know, it wasn't, that's not what I heard when the needle hit the groove. Uh, that was side two. So when I like side two, when uh, so that song, uh, I can sum it up th to this. I think it it really uh, told the story in three minutes of yep. of what what you were about to learn uh, about a band sure. from England that was a '70s band that had a lot of history. And was a small club at the time, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. for, former members, it's kind of like Thin Lizzy or something, you know. The they only had one guitar player before that, and and the small club, you know. You could say the same about Metallica. You say that about a lot of my favorite bands, actually. Where yeah. it's kind yeah. of a, kind of a small club. Um, but anyway, um, in it in it. It it set a it set a tone uh, on on you guys's versions that set the tone for the whole record and how do you oh okay well what are they gonna do for track two you know what I mean uh, but but uh, yeah when I think of when I hear a staff I'm going all right someone's playing track one of Ace of Spades just to be clear yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. that title but that title track uh, is the calling card it's the whole it's the whole thing, and I'm really happy that 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 became a calling card and a hit song for a band that uh, you know had the dispositions that they had. <laughs> you know, the, yeah, good work. The, the uh, you know what I mean? Like they're doing the best that they can do. That's just how they look, and that's just how they play. There's no lying. There's no makeup. There's no wigs. This is it was as real as fucking a smack in the face yeah, and early yeah. on no teeth yeah give it a 10 out of 10 yeah yeah and it really does represent what motorhead was and and what they will continue to be very yeah. different than if if your introduction to kiss was rock and roll all night or even black sabbath with paranoid i'm not sure if either of those songs are they're fine but i don't i don't think they're representative right uh, you know talking about band <laughs> signature songs i don't know if they're representative of uh what the band was, but Ace of Spades really says it all about Motorhead. It's fast, it's pretty short, um, it's noisy, it's it's got Lemmy's, you know, his uh, that chainsaw bass introduction. Uh, it's got a ripping guitar solo. It, it's pure Motorhead, that song. And it comes to a dead stop in the down, middle. Down, down, you know, down, down, down. Talking, he just starts, you know, he starts you know, speaking from the pulpit, you know. You know who I'm going to lose, da, da, you know, and then it's got this little soliloquy. You know? It's, where did this come from? You know, okay, pick it back up, boys. Right, right, right into the guitar solo, and don't forget the Joker. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next song is uh, 
Love me like a reptile. Shock you like an electric eel. What does everybody think of this one? Jason, you want to go? Yeah. I, I, uh, it's not just this song. Uh, I, I would have to go back and listen and take notes on the tunes um, for full review. But I, I hear a lot of really great percussion, like auxiliary percussion on all of these songs and reptiles. Oh, yeah. reptile I, I, is, have, I have three, three songs I want to comment yeah, yeah. about. Okay, but, uh, Reptile is one of them because they've got the maraca and they, <laughs> you know, they've got that. Yep. And there's, I can't re recall what song I should have, I should have jotted down some notes, but there's, I'm not, I'm not getting ahead by way of, uh, rep I love Reptile. I think that it's a it's a great uh, there's some there's some great drumming going on by way of it's like yeah. a Ramones feel or something you know, um, which is not a surprise that that type of drumming is on is in Motorhead tunes because Ramones are blues based is coming from the same Little Richard and oh, yeah yeah. Same, yeah. Sock rock. hop, sock mm -hmm. hop, fifties rock kind of oh, thing. Yeah. Same kind of, you know, uh, brothers from a different mother kind of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, the the there's a lot of auxiliary things to hear when you listen to Reptile, among a few other tunes on the full record, and that's what <laughs> sticks out to me. On top of the fact that "Love Me Like a Reptile" is probably the coolest, you know. Wow, that's rough. That's <laughs> rough. Yeah, that, that, that was another thing. Jason and I seem to be thinking the same things. The, the one thing that I remember about this song, before I ever heard it, um, and I, I was familiar with the album, and I, I, I knew the song title, and I was fascinated by the song title. What the fuck is yeah. that? I mean, like a reptile, what does that mean? I thought that that was, I don't know if I thought it was cool or, or, or not, but I, I did, it, I mean, it caught my attention. But yeah, getting to the, the drumming, and there are two other songs on this album, uh, Love Me Like a Reptile is the first one, that to me, now remember, I'm not a musician, so you guys can correct me if I'm using the wrong terminology, it, it, the drums, they, they sound almost like a shuffle, like a... I don't know if it's a lot of opening and closing, the, uh, the hi-hat or what is, um, yeah. but amazing drum. they're not powerhouse drums, but they're, um, they're, they're just really swingy, shuffly. Yes. Yeah, I love it. And also something that was really cool that I always thought was great about Filthy was, um, and I, I, I'm sure, I know I'm not the first person to notice this, but I've never heard anybody talk about it, is how when he played, how low he played, that he, he had his shoulders down and he kind of, you know, instead of, you know, like especially Nico McBrain, you know, plays up so high. Yeah. But Filthy, Filthy played, he, he kept his hands down really low. Right. Um, I feel like his, his snare. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't do rim shots, really. It was more pop right in the middle of the snare. Yeah. And then if you did fills, they were punk fills. They're just Tom. No, no. You would get with the kick drums in a couple of years, you know, with guys like, you know, Steve, uh, was it Stephen Kaufman from Accept, you know, and just, or yeah. Les Pinks or any of those guys. Um, yeah, there was no quads or triplets, really. They were just single, single stroke rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Like that fill that, that in Motorhead before the vocals start. But that's a long Tom fill. That's a but no bass drums, just all toms. Yeah. Oh, Motorhead the song. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I talked about this when I that's when a I full talked about <laughs> when I talked about either Overkill or Bomber. That um, Filthy is fucking awesome. I mean, maybe he's not. And again, as a non musician, I don't think it's my place to to say who is more talented. And I I would never say that or who is a more technical drummer or guitarist or singer or whatever but uh for me similar with with peter chris yeah maybe eric carr you know he had the bigger drum kit so that you know draws more attention and he he was more powerful and i think it's the same comparing uh, uh eric carr to peter chris comparing mickey d to filthy mick uh you know maybe mickey d is a powerhouse you know he played with king diamond and uh he, yeah. he's a real heavy metal drummer and um but but filthy was just the perfect drummer for Motorhead, no? Just like Peter Chris, I think, was the perfect drummer for Kiss. Yep, yep. Just totally agree. Old, old school, coming from a different school. You know, like I said, there's no quads and triplets, and, you know, it's more four on the floor and doing like, uh, 
you know, a lot of understanding. Yeah, a lot of symbol snare, psh, psh, a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot like of in sing- the beginning of Reptile. Yeah, creative drummer. And I think my joke with those this sort of stuff is that um, Motorhead didn't listen to Motorhead, you know. So Filthy had to come up with what he grew up with, was which was most likely jazz and R and B drummers, you know. And then the British Invasion pop. That's what he heard. So and then then it starts to like sort of turn metal with Purple and Sabbath and stuff. But you know, those are the bands uh, that he probably listened to early on. So okay, I'm just playing this stuff, but now faster. He was also he was a huge Thin Lizzy fan. He was, and in, if anybody's jazzy and R and B ish, it's Brian Downey. Yeah, and that is just swing, swing, swing. Yeah. Uh, and Mick, what do you think about the uh, Reptile? Love it. I think it's a great second song. Um, when I, I moved to Milwaukee a year later after I heard uh, Ace of Spades, um, we had like a listening party, uh, and I brought him Ace of Spades, and just blew the room wide open. So much so that one of the guys went out and had a sh- shirt made yellow with green felt letters that said "Love me like a reptile." That was Mike Morozek. So wow. he's out there listening. Yeah. We called him Zach. And we were like, wow, man, that's fucking commitment. But he just flipped over motor. He thought it was the coolest thing he'd ever heard. I so, love hearing that. That's, that's, I don't think that's going to be hard to beat with your yeah. buddy. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, what, yeah. that's what's supposed to happen, you know? Right. right. And, and I was just in Madison last week and I, I brought it up. And I, my, my other friend was there. Telling me, oh, yeah, I remember that shirt. <laughs> and it was like, Love and he wore it proudly. You know, we go to parties and chicks are there, or whatever. And he's trying to pick a chick up and just love me like a reptile. He was not playing around. Yeah, I guess good either for picking up or scaring off if you're wearing a shirt that <laughs> yeah. says "Love me you like a reptile." You knew where you stood pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next and song is. By the way, you have the callback when he does uh, "Killed by Death." You know, you gotta squeeze my lizard. So it's a little callback. If you squeeze my lizard, I'll yeah. put my snake on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little callback. Oh, and, and then uh, don't forget. And maybe you guys were not into Motorhead at this period. Snake bite love. Oh, well, that's right. That whole song was about the. Uh, I I I um. I'd rather see a python in the middle of the night. Uh, coiled around you, wrapping around so tight, something like that. Yeah, he had a, a thing for, for reptiles, I guess, Lemmy did. Clearly, yeah. Although an electric eel is not a reptile. No, it's, it's not. It's but it, it fits the song, so I sure. guess it's well, okay. Well, I think that it's uh, all of this is phallic. It yeah. Might, uh, it could be, possibly. Yeah, yeah the cover I, of I, Sacrifice had uh, the, the, the cock tongue coming out of the, the war pig. <laughs> It's all phallic. It's a little, a little inside yeah. joke there. Yeah. Um, moving on to the next song, Western movies shoot you in the back. You know. What is it? What does everybody think of this one? Might be my. I can't say. I can't have a favorite. I won't let myself. But I love the lyrics. Yeah. Like, like a lot. Kind of cowboy western movie. It kind of suits yeah. the album cover. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was interesting. The ad lib. I feel like it. The it, it, in the western movies is like an ad lib, like an afterthought. I never thought it was like part of the verse because, you know, it's kind of the intro to a verse, right? Is like, all right, come on, kind mm-hmm. of. A, all right, you know, the way you set up your verse and in the western movies, and then there's a whole other bar happen. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, and then he starts the verse and da 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 You know, he, he's getting into his phrasing, but in the Western movies, I feel like is a setup for that. And I thought that that was the coolest thing ever. Uh, and then, um, you know, the Crimson Rain, I just he's painting the, the picture. His, his brush strokes are beautiful. Uh, the wounded burns, all of the, you know, so it's so good. Uh, and and I never, uh, I I never wanted actually, I never wanted Mo, uh, Lemmy, uh, for that matter, to to write anything other than things that were like from a Clint Eastwood movie. I I, I almost wanted him to be, you know, like uh, some kind of like, you know. Willie Nelson pirate kind of a car- cartoon character and just write these kind of weird storyteller country gunfighter lonesome cowboy shit when well, that's kind of what he was anyway and his life was the lonesome cowboy anyway so. 
Well, and Dan and I have talked about this a lot, those little asides that he does. They're, yeah, we talk about that a lot, his ad-libs, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm still trying to figure out the one he says in uh, Killed by Death, just before the, uh, the, the Wawa starts. Shut out, just before the intro yeah. solo comes in, right? Hey. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, no idea. Is it fuck off? Is it you know, all right? Is it all right? I, I have no idea what he's saying. Yep. Well, I hope you guys aren't losing any sleep over it. <laughs> well, yeah, I am. I just, you know. I, only after I listen to it. Yeah. Right, then it's a uh, yeah, but let me let me has good ad libs. Um, That's a great song. Is, yeah, uh, live to win is next. I love this one so far. Of the first four songs, I would say this is my favorite. Um, I, I just love that. You know that again. That that classic Lemmy bass intro, uh, and then that guitar. Great song, live to win. Yep, and again, sort of setting up who they are. I mean, he's got a tattooed on him. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I love the way that song starts. I love the that it's almost like a horn part. Boom, ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. You know, it's it's really a cool riff. I mean, that's so overlooked with Eddie Clark. Just all these great riffs um, that were just so in time with a great groove every time, every time. Yeah, I don't think the the band ever sounded the same when Eddie left. Yeah, I agree. Like the yet, another perfect day is. I, I love the record, but. It's not there. There's it's a it's a new Motorhead. It's the dawning of a new Motorhead for sure. Yeah, yeah it's the bridge to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, speaking of that, something that I've realized over the years is, uh, as as much as I love Motorhead and so many people love Motorhead, you know, when when uh, you guys have had these conversations, you know, as much as anybody with your friends or um, you know, especially when you're a kid and you and then online you see people talking about it, you know, when you talk about. People love to say my all-time favorite blank, whether it's album or song or singer, concert, drummer, whatever. Um, have you ever heard anybody ever say that their all-time favorite guitarist is Fast Eddie or <laughs> Filthy Taylor or that their all-time favorite singer is Lemmy or their favorite bassist is Lemmy? I honestly don't think I've ever heard anybody say that, but so many people would say collectively they're, they're the greatest band ever. They're my favorite band ever. I guess it's like a... Uh, this is another cliche that I'm having a hard time with the the irons in the fire. What's the other one about the 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 the, the sum is greater than the the parts? What, what's that? What's that cliche? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, the sum is greater than the, than the parts. Yeah, something like that. So maybe as individually, we don't really think right. of them as oh my favorite. This guy's my favorite. When you put them all together, they're fucking Motorhead and they're awesome. Well, yeah. I've I've uh, witnessed firsthand. I have on video uh somewhere dressing room operation rock and roll tour middle of the day i think metal church is about to go on so it's probably like 5 p.m or something and we're in our dressing room getting ready and lemmy's wearing daisy dukes and nothing else <laughs> and he's got a you know a glass of Jack on ice, I think. And then Wurzel has a drink as well, but Wurzel's dressed in his stage gear. Wurzel's ready, ready. He's catching a buzz and big smile, and he's just following Lemmy around. Man, a few words. And Wurzel just comes in with Lemmy and, and right into our, just they just walk in. Hey, what's up? You know, oh, come on in, man. There's guitars laying around and stuff. And Lemmy just sits on the couch and picks up one of Danny's Les Paul's black Les Paul. And I say, play leaving here. And he goes, all right. And he starts playing leaving here on guitar and everyone's eyebrows went up. Let me, it's not the best guitar player in any room. <laughs> Shall he, we? You know I mean? And he plays bass. He plays bass like, like a guitar. guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And everybody sure. knows I, that. Everybody. Yeah, like left hand on the piano. He strums. He strums his bass. And yeah. Oh yeah. I I kind of when I play bass, I kind of strum my bass a little bit, or I'm you know I play with my fist, and you know it's a lot of alligator, 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 and that's I get that from whatever the faster Gene Simmons, which is, that's more of like a Paul Paul McCartney thing, but. But you know what I learned from Motorhead and and uh, and Lemmy is is that way or Ramones you know the Ramones is a lot of downstroke you know all downs 
But he stri- he I learned that Al you know about alter- 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 alternate picking is what they call that from Lemmy trying to play a bass like a guitar. He's not playing Motown, you know. He's not. No, no. He's not walking around bass lines, although he can play a pretty cool bluesy pentatonic little bass solo, and he did that often. But he sits down, he plays "Leaving Here," and Danny pick gets a harmonica out, and I have it on video, and I'm clapping. And let me sing, and you know, heard it all in a dream last night, bound a bound a bound, you know, just by himself, and we're all just grooving, and it's like some some of the my crew guys are in there just like kind of laughing and like looking around and like and I'm like, dude, can you believe that this shit is actually happening right in front of us? You know, because I'm a fan. We're right. Fans. Mm-hmm. So it's the fans that are seeing this and. We didn't care that he was a sloppy guitar player, just like we don't care. So the sum is greater than its parts. This is proof, and, 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 it's, and it's obvious. Like, Lemmy doing uh, an acoustic night solo at the coffee shop would probably not be... Musical. It, it, would, it would be storytelling. Yes, yeah, that's what you go for. You would you would have to go into it knowing what you were you were getting yourself into. If you wanted to see great musicianship, you need to wait for Steve Vai to come to town. Yeah, exactly. If you want to hear a guy tell stories and talk to, talk a little bit of smack and be funny, it would be more like a comedy sh- comedy show, <laughs> and it wouldn't really be about Lemmy's uh, musical prowess. Now, could he write a song? Well. Of course you can. Just listen to uh, Mama, I'm Coming Home. Yeah. We're in 1916. Yeah, Mama, yeah. I'm Coming Home and, and uh, uh, what's the other? Road to Nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what's, the, what's the other one that's on? It's in six. Born to Raise Hell. Was that, was that, uh, was that with, uh, that was with, uh, that was with Ice T and Whit Crane, I think, right? Not Ozzy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, the lyrics yeah, yeah. Uh, and the forever. ideas. That's what I'm, thinking of. I'm sorry? Oh, Love Me Forever on 1916. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. So he can write songs all day long, uh, but don't ask him to do them solo. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a love, totally different written. Yeah, yeah I, 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 lo- I, love, I love Lemmy. I love Motorhead, but uh, I don't feel bad saying that in reality – uh, probably not gonna do a can't play eruption. Not that, <laughs> no, not that no, I, I care, or not that I care yeah, yeah, that yeah, Lemmy. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to hear Lemmy try to even try he, to. He, he gets the job done, right? He does what needs well, to be done. In his disposition, he did. He did great. You know, I'm, I'm, this is kind of cart before the horse. This would be a great way to end. But listen, when you look like that and you sing like that, and, and it's it's not his fault. He talked like that. He talked the way that he sang. That's his. He's being. He's true all the time. He's not doing a character. It's, right. The shit is real. Everything is real. So, if he would have, uh, uh, everybody knows that he's a gigantic Beatles guy. He's a Beatles guy. His favorite shit in the world is the Beatles. If he could sing like like Paul McCartney, he would have. Right. I know right. that he would have. But the disposition that the man is was in, he kicked it in the ass. He right. took whatever he had and he put it on the stage, and people fell in love with it. So yep. he, who who wins? Lemmy wins. Yeah, because it's, it's real. He's not. I mean, you if he's influenced by the Beatles, you can't tell. Because yeah, I, I there's so much a, Lemmy in it that it's it's you, it's Le- that's you, man. You are Motorhead. So yeah, you know the um, you guys probably know about this the uh, What's in My Bag series from uh, Amoeba Records. Mm-hmm. Yes, and Lemmy did that 10, 12 years ago. I saw and, or something, and um, I think it was on that one, or maybe it was in the Lemmy documentary. I can't remember. That's the documentary. We went to the, the mono copy of something. That's right. And he was, that's right. Ah, yeah, it wasn't in What's in My Bag. It was in the, the documentary. And he, he really wanted the, the mono box set, right? Yes. Because he's like, yeah. that's the way it was intended to be heard. That's how I heard it. Yeah. You know? yeah and I, yeah. I think at that point, and that was in what, 2007 or 2008. And I've been into Motorhead for quite some time at that point. I was surprised that, that he was such a big Beatles fan. You would never hear it. I mean, God knows you don't hear the Beatles in, in Motorhead. But the, right. yeah, I was kind of surprised at that. Uh, moving on to the next one, we're now at 
Two Trans- o'clock in the morning, baby. I know it's late. I know it's late. He says, uh, I think baby, sugar, and honey, right? In, in the first yeah. line of each each verse. He's a, the yeah. little soft side of, uh, of Lenny. Sure, yeah. He's being persuasive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I like yeah. this one too. It, it's a, it's got the class. It's a little bit. Uh, it's not as fast as some of the other ones, but the, I, I like fast and loose. Good song. Good lyrics. Romantic. Yeah, it's n- it's not about being fast. Uh, it's about <laughs> being loose. Yeah. <laughs> Great outro in this song too. Great outro. What what's the outro? <laughs> it's just it's a. Da, 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 da. I mean, they just drive. Oh, it just fa- fades out. Yeah, yeah, he's got the harmony vocal. Fast yep. and loose. Fast and loose. Fast and yep. loose. Fast yep. And it's a solo going on and it's a fade out. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's, that's strong. Yeah. I think that, uh, once again, storytelling, it's like watching a little movie about Lemmy chasing women, you know? Yeah. This is auto backstage of the marquee 1979 or whatever. Yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. It kind of makes me feel like he's making a late night uh, visit or a phone call, right? It's Lemmy's version of a booty call. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he, and what's he's what's, in the, the he's he's using the payphone down the street. Yeah, I'm right down the street. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, what's the what's the lyric? I can't. Um, I I I know the gist of it, but I can't. I it's not coming to me. That it's not it's not time to get up. It's time to get down. <laughs> Whatever that is, very yeah. very clever. I like that. Yeah. Um. All right. Next is uh. So I'm going to I'm going to interrupt you. This this is the lyrics are genius. Oh, yes they are. I'm going to mention the lyrics. And, Go ahead, Jason. How much how much more do these lyrics make sense to you after you went out on your first tour? Right. Or just being knowing what or MacGyver. Hey MacGyver, when you got a problem over here and just it's the yeah, whole yeah. it's the uh-huh. whole MO of being on the road, you know. Yeah. One of the greatest I, live intros too on, on Hammersmith. Yes. Yes. What does he say? This, this is dedicated to the road crew. Fine body of men. And then they bring out the, uh, I don't know who he is. And then he, that fucker screams into that mic like, Jesus, that's loud at a motorhead show. I can't imagine what was like unamplified. Take your head off. Ah! And then they off they go. Great. And I always wondered, was that intro like a mistake or not? Like, ba na na na. Ba na na. You know, or like, oh, that's like, let's like, uh, like bite the bullet. Yeah, right. Yeah. A mistake. Uh, this now speaking of the lyrics, Jason brought up the lyrics. I like the song, but it always and still does a little bit bugs me. After all these years, I've heard that song God knows how many times. I can't memorize the lyrics. There's just too, it's another this, and I can kind of piece them together. Another, uh, another fucking another bloody foreign post. Another set of scars to boast. Scores to um, boast. Uh, what scars. else? Um, he's, he's right. Scars. Scars. To boast. A scar. Another set of scars to boast. I figured it was scores, like you know, chicks and that sort of stuff. No, no scars. I think, I'm sure it's scars. I've always. Yeah. I got this one on the last oh, tour. Yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, well yeah, said. Yeah, and uh, another. Uh, damn it. What's the first lyric? Um, another town, another. I can another town, another place, or another yeah. Yeah. girl, another face. That's I, right. I just, I That's just right. can't get it. You got it. Can't get it. You got it. But then I lose it. I, it's just too. Uh, it's not like fast, like fast, fast, fast. But there's there's no pauses, you know. And I I just can't keep up. But I love yeah, the he, song. He's not breathing. He can't wait to breathe until the. <laughs> you the would know. You, yeah, you, uh, with your training, yeah. He's he goes at it hard on that one. And it's a classic Motorhead song. But uh, it, it's my life's mission at some point to to know the lyrics properly. It's a it's um. Uh, it's interesting drum dr- uh, drumming on there because I feel like it. Da, 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 it's on the one. It's like Deuce by Kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's and it's set up like Deuce. You know, the fills are at the end of the of the, of the vocal the vocal measure, right? John don't take on begun don't do what it goes. Just like just like Deuce. So it's and, yeah. Now that just going back a little bit going back because uh jason's talking about the drumming fast and loose was another one that had that that shuffle drums that i mentioned earlier that uh yeah. love me like a reptile had yeah. it's, it's not heavy metal drumming is it it's uh no it, it's very unique it's not four on the floor it's not breaking the law it's not no mm-hmm. no no yeah. 
Once again, that's this Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if if this were a record, if it were Jason's record, we would be talking about Ace of Spades again. Uh, right. But if you flip the, I guess the what most people know as uh, Fire Fire Strike Six Strike Eight Strike Nine Strike Ten, you struck out again. Uh, this is a fast one. This this one is uh, this again classic, fast high speed up tempo well, high the, octane. It would motorhead. be the chase. Did we skip over oh, chase? Is better than the catch? No, that's it. That's the second to last one on this version. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Fire yeah. fire opens chase, the second side. Chase uh, chase is my is song one on side right. one, and and Ace of Spades is track one on. That's right. right. Okay. Just making yeah. sure we're so that they flip sides, but uh, yeah, Chase doesn't open the second side. It is fire, fire, which makes much more sense. I Interesting. Think, it's, you know, so so where, I guess that's where the thing is, about records. On, yeah, on, you guys's, on you guys' record, where is Chase? Where is Second it? to last. It's track 11. <laughs> yes. Really? So they, yeah. did, they did change the, they changed the running order. I mean, that's, that's a big change for my brain. Oh, yeah. It's really big. That's why I'm still trying to get my head around it. Like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So Ace of Spades on went from one. Well, from yours, Jason went from one. Sorry, went from six to one. And I mean, if you're talking about twelve tracks, and from on yours, Chase right went from. I, think I have the vinyl is there. Hang on. On Jason's version, Chase went from one to eleven on the. Wow. I guess most people know. Weird. Yeah, yeah I only know the only, it as a CD, this, and it was. This is the only way I know it. I, you know, I probably have the CD behind me, um, and it's probably it's probably different. But uh, e e either way, we can we can continue with fire fire. Uh, I I think it's uh it's another one of those, you know. This is kind of a fire 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 like it's fast but it's bouncy if that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah yeah it is to me this one is uh is very, it's a great i was saying earlier this is the the good thing about records compared to cds i guess is you had two chances to have an opening song you had the opening song on side one and the opening song on side two right um maybe not quite the same on cds but uh yeah fire fire is a a scorcher i'm uh, now i'm gonna go into itunes now and i think i'm gonna put put that you know you can do the playlist on that original on that american order and see what it sounds like yeah it's Re funny how it can change right how how you you hear it differently depending on where it is on the album right well and it used to be that way with cassettes if you recall they wouldn't have them sometimes the same order was on the record van halen records for sure it used to be all whacked because the length of the sides were different right but you can leave eight minutes blank on side one yeah You'd have to put something on the other side, just like whacked when you're used to one, and then you hear the other. Yeah, but when you're a kid and you you don't you learn that shit till later. You know you don't you don't know that any of that. No, no until right. later. Oh, well, that's cool. No, you don't know it's the you know the record company or the you know whatever it is. Yeah. Or the pressing plant. We got yeah. a problem. We can't run the order. <laughs> oh man, why? And then the band is learning this at the same time because they're kids as well. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes. You know. Yeah. Uh, next is a Motorhead classic, and it's Jailbait. Just can't wait. Jailbait, baby, get Jailbait, down. Jailbait, baby, get down. Jailbait, We're, baby, come on. Get down. Is really good about three or four different meanings too. You got to think. Get down, as in you know, get up, get down, kind of thing. Get down, as I'm hiding you, right? You know, <laughs> I'm gonna keep you away from the watch line of the police. Well, it's a it's a callback to to get down in um, uh, fast and loose. That's right. Yeah, uh, a classic. I think I think this is one that they kept in the set list. I think they're pretty much all their career. Ah, now this is the one. Before I forget, this is another one. I think this is the third and the last one that has maybe more than the other two that has that real shuffle. Oh yeah, sure does. The, the shuffle drumming. Yep, yeah. But the drum fills are totally swingy jazz. Yeah, yeah. Big time. You guys are much better at vocalizing music than I am. Is he? Uh, is he? What is is he playing sixteens? Yeah, with one hand, you know he's that too. That's Tommy Ramone. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it is. 
yeah. and a couple lines of speed and off you go. Yeah. And you, and you couldn't, I mean, this is pretty obvious. You couldn't do this song and bands don't do this type of song lyrically anymore. Oh, um, no, no, no. Hey, no, teenage it's... baby, your sweet young thing still tied to mama's apron strings. I don't even dare to ask your age. It's enough to know you're here backstage. Oof, yeah. that, that wouldn't fly these days. Yeah, Christine 16. Yeah. I think this is more, uh, I think this one is more salacious than Christine 16 even. More truck stop, less playground, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, very well said. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What, what did you say, Chris? I said more truck stop, less playground. <laughs> very well said. Yeah, that was good. I missed that. That time I saw you come out of school that day. I knew. Oh, that, Maybe that's I not, knew. That's wow. not happening that. in jailbait. So. Whoa, no, 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 no. That's that's way too subtle for jailbait. That, yeah. that, 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 that implies distance. Right, right, right. And stalking. <laughs> so so I, I think at least in jailbait, there's no stalking. No, no, it's, it's pretty honest. It's like, you know, it, it was delivered. <laughs> by means of you know innocence it was not delivered by way of creepy dude go hey i brought some brought my little sister with me no yeah yeah dude in a raincoat yeah no uh, yeah not having also then you had a uh, winger was 17 that was kind of the last attempt yeah. at that sort of stuff yeah. yeah i think that's the one that gets the most shit probably because it was the biggest song out of, of these three that we're talking about 17 i guess was the and god ted nugent you know sang about this too and oh god I mean, yeah. everybody knows but uh yeah it's kind of funny how things have changed lyrically that's just unacceptable now first line of uh i saw her standing there she was just 17 you know what i mean oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. that's again. a bit i mean it's been in it's been in music and in rock and roll a long time i feel like you know uh lady pop stars talk about you know being young and you know i'm not gonna paint a picture for you guys but i think it's in music it's in lyrics yeah it has been a long time and still is i just think that it's more subtle and i feel like uh, lyrics are are an important way to understand um uh the darkness the dark side of how like ooh creepy but i like it Right, kind of the side of rock and roll because it's fantastical. It's not yeah. being acted upon or, you know. Yeah, you're being drawn to a baser instinct somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's prime. It's primal kind of mm -hmm. a feeling that you're getting and, and, and you're scared a yeah. little bit. Uh, yeah, but Motorhead was all about that, you know. Because it's dangerous, right? It's important. So the, I feel like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, after yeah, saying that, it's dangerous. I mean, come on, you know, he must have freaked half of America right out from the second yeah. he got on television. Yeah, talking about that, they thought Elvis was bad, and then he comes along. They must have shit yeah. their fucking pants. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of. I just think that it's part, it's part of lyrics, and love it or hate it or be be afraid of it. If you're afraid of it, then the the music wins. The song did its job. It's there to scare you. I, I, yep. uh, it's a great song. I love Joe Bait. Yeah, yep. it's a good one. It's a it's a Motorhead classic. That's why they played it forever. I I assume they played it on on every tour after this. Um, yep. Easy to find out. Next is uh, dance, and I want Jason to start this one. I don't know. I I have a feeling Jason might have something to say about this lyrically. Jason, anything? I don't know if you know where I'm going with this. No, I, I, I don't, but just, just to kind of like jump in head first, uh, I realized later on that, that like, uh, like in Fire Fire, not to, I'm not trying to go backwards, but uh, Big Black Smoke, that's a rhyme scheme that I, I use. I feel like I've used that more than once. I'm kind of getting to in that my a rhyme, bit. In my rhyme. Uh, in dance, I don't really know yet what you're pertaining to as far as my lyrics might uh, uh, pray a nod uh, to Lim's writing, lyric, his lyrics. Uh, but this was a, th a lot of these tunes are a big influence. I feel like, uh, yeah, I can like hear it. Songs I wrote like Stick It In and Twister and things like that are, are, are right in here with uh, like, like dance and Firefire Fire and, and even Jailbait. Uh, and I, I and 
changing gears a little bit in um uh what what broken teeth song is it oh De uh, not devil on the road flamethrower uh about yeah. the the white lines uh bright yeah. white lines burning up the uh, highway burning up the street or, burning yeah, up burning, the highway yeah, yeah. That, that's like a let me lurk but what i was getting at is um i think it was a direct lift that, that oh, you oh made. there's but, there's no doubt yeah <laughs> and i know you're very open about it i'm, I'm not this is not a gotcha moment at all it's it's no. a, it's it's a nod to you um uh dance uh, dance till till your shoes are hot dance till your nerves are shot dance till your bones are tired is this ringing a bell jason no hellacious but, acres bad guy wow no you that's the the first <laughs> i don't even uh, remember I that a, song your your lemmy's lyric in in dance is dance yeah. till your bones are tired and yeah. your lyric is dancing till your bones are tired Dance wow. until your bones are. Um, are you sure that's something, the something till, you, till your life expired. Dance until your bones are tired. Make Give you sweat till your life expires. Give me a second. Go ahead. Yeah, because I'm looking at dance till your bones are tired. Dance till you feel inspired. Dance, get your hormones fired. Dance, 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 dance. dancing wired. Yep. Yeah, so it's uh, it's uh, on on bad guy on hellacious acres. Dance until your bones are tired. Making you sweat till your life expires. <laughs> wow. Love it. Well, thanks, Lim. Again. <laughs> yeah. And and by the way, I love this song. This this is one of the ones that we as we talked earlier. This has got that great a little bit, and I'm not saying it sounds like I'll be your sister, but it does have that that real bounce, that that kind of rock, you know, rock and roll, bouncy, you know, good good kind of a good time feel to it. Right. Jason checking in. Is Jason's in the looking at something. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my air conditioner to blow cold. How about that? Oh, I thought I thought you were. I thought you were. Uh, check, no, checking up I was. Oh, I was gonna. Just, I was gonna do what you did. I'm just. I wasn't gonna look on the internet. I was just gonna break out the record. <laughs> oh, that, well, that'll uh, take a look. I think it's in the second verse of Bad Guy. Bad Guy being, I think it's the last song on the album. Yeah, dance until your bones are tired, make you sweat till your life expires. Yep. I'm the one to tell you don't look around because the bad guys finish with, with, with hands, hands down. down. Yeah. Bad guy, once was a bad guy. Bad guy, now I'm going to destroy bad guy. Born under a bad sign, born under a bad sign. Because you have to. be a bad, bad guy. Yeah. But yeah, of course, I mean, that that's not a nod. That I think a, a lot of it is stream of consciousness. I, uh, I yeah, have I'm to, sure not trying to save myself I'm no, just no. To, you know you no, don't for, need to you go for what you know i uh, let yeah. me, i think lemmy wrote that way as well i think it was real he wrote what he knew uh he probably read a lot more literature than me as well so lemmy reads books i read lemmy lyrics yeah yeah equally as good i think in in their own world sure well, he he was an intelligent man Let's yep. move on. I've heard that Next over. is, uh, so far my favorite, uh, mm -hmm. this is like a minute and a half, minute 40, bite the bullet, I'm leaving you. I like your email, Chris. Yeah. Stop. Oh, they... stop mincing about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all that. I've got uh, friends who just still love that. Like, what does that mean? It's like, this, it means just go look it up. Just, it's more fun. Roots. And that is that is filthy that fucks that up, right? He he misses, he I guess it's supposed to be da -na -na -da, da -da -da -da, and filthy. I bless, I guess just plays da -na -na, and then he stops. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That that's a that's. I'm uh, so glad they left that on there. Yeah. Ah, yeah. it's a it's a little slice of uh, reality, I guess. A little, well, little, I mean, we're talking about it now, so it it sticks with you. Right. Well, it shows you how much personality they had. Yeah. You know, so much humor and so much just, you know, we're flying by the seat of our, you know, well-worn pants here. And by the way, what does speak, you know, we talked earlier about that we couldn't figure out Lemmy's ad-libs. What, what does Filthy say before he says, for fuck's sake? What does he say? S Saw Dragon? Something like that. For fuck's oh, sake? Oh, I'll have to listen to that. I, I know what that is, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've never I'll, known. I'll listen to that. I know that one, but I'll, I'll have to listen to it. What song are you talking about? Same song? Same song. Yep. Okay. It's what he says. Oh no! So no, no, no! Stop min Stop mincing about his jailbait. Is that jailbait? Yeah, I'm. I'm I think we're, or I am, 
Yeah, stop mincing about his jailbait. Stop mincing about. Yeah, the one, the the fuck up. Oh, is, okay. Is in uh, bite the bullet. Yes, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, but stop mincing about his jailbait. Yeah, two two right. kind of two two songs, not quite back to back, but that had uh, you know a little verbiage verbiage in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Yeah, I, and I don't know what he says there, but uh, for me, bite the bullet. But now I love the song. It's it's of the song so far. It's my favorite. But doesn't it doesn't it feel incomplete? You know, they got the three uh, verses, um, and then the solo, and then the song just ends. I feel like there should be another verse or or something there, and then it it just ends. But I love it for what's there. Uh, it's awesome song. Again, very fast up tempo. I, I feel it's one of those. Stepping out. Yeah, it, uh, it's one of those songs that I feel like you could put on repeat or it's it's kind of unfinished like you're kind of alluding to and i feel like they could do this they could just play the same three verses for like an hour <laughs> yeah right and that it feels incomplete but on the version i have it then it goes perfectly into chase is better than the catch yeah that's what i was saying earlier with chase is better than the catch as the first song like i i associate them together you know hearing the uh it goes yeah perfectly so that's what i'm used yeah. to i don't know i'll have to throw it out of order and see what it feels like well just right. just so, put just put the hammer after it and feel it is that what's after it the hammer uh hammer is the closing yeah. out the record yeah hammer which is what to i'm vocal. totally used to all the time yeah of course yeah. uh well all right now then we'll go on to the next one chases better in the catch a classic again i in for for me the single maybe most the the best sounding guitar that Motorhead has ever had is is the opening riff of uh and I again I can't sing as well as you guys. Uh I mean sing sing music or sing words for that matter, but just that that riff is so it just cuts right through you. It's so and I mean mm -hmm. Motorhead, as I mentioned, I, I don't like Motorhead metal and they're not a, a like a heavy metal band. Um but oh that that riff just the sound of it and the the tone, the, this just everything is just so heavy. And it's swing, it's swinging again. Yeah, it's got a good groove. By the way, back to jailbait. That's a great example of the the weird percussion they throw in there. All of a sudden, a vibra slap comes out of nowhere. Brrr, you know, like why? Whose idea was that? But it works perfectly. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's jailbait or not. But there's one song you guys can chime in whenever you want and interrupt. Every measure has. <laughs> That yeah. might be, uh, shoot you oh, in the Oh, is, is that this little percussive thing? Yeah, it's at the beginning of Crazy Train. That's what most people know the Viber side. That yeah, it sounds, <laughs> it's like a rat, rattlesnake thing, right? Kind of ish, yeah. Yeah, uh, but, but on uh, Reptile, they, they're I actually was using say. some kind of maraca with some effects yeah. on it. Yep, yep, uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Um, yeah, so, so it's not the same thing, but you, you could get away with it probably, but. Have you it's got? Like a, um, it's, okay. it's kind of like a wooden cowbell with a with a big tongue with a ball on the end of it, and you hit you hit the ball, and it hits the the wooden you know the and the wooden thing has rattlers in it, so it goes. Ah, okay. Yeah. I've never heard that. Have you guys seen the classic metal album of Making a Base of Spades? Yeah, the I think DH I have that on DVD. Yeah. Okay, so and here's another great percussion moment where they're using the thimbles on their hands to go clicky, clicky, clicky on the mixing desk, and they recorded that. Oh, oh is that remember. what that is? Yes, yeah. They, yep. they went like this? And, and what song is that? Ace of Spades. Where? I think it's on Wait, just the tail. It's during that little kind of breakdown kind of part. Wow. And they play along with it. They You'll, you'll see them play it. There's yeah. an, there's another song on the record that once again I should have taken notes uh, like hey guys what the hell is this you know but it just sounds like uh sticks on a rim on a drum rim you know like this gallopy thing what song is that you know what I'm talking about yeah I do yeah, yeah you're it right. sounds uh, like the thimble thing what you're talking about yeah, but yeah. in my mind it just sounds like sticks on the rim and they just recorded it yeah, uh, that's it's, um, it's auxiliary percussion galore. Yeah, yeah, it's subtle, but it works really well. Yeah, there's tambourine think, in there too. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. I, I think this vibra slap thing you're talking about is in um, dance. No, 
Oh, I'm sure. It's all over the place. Like like I said, one song, it's every bar. It's every measure. <laughs> maybe that's dance then. Maybe, it, maybe it's dance. Every, it's every bar. And you forget, it's very well mixed. It's mixed. Vic Mail and the, whoever the, his engineers were, they just killed it. Yep. Yep. Especially if you uh, look at the other bands that they had produced, it's an interesting choice that they had Motorhead. And yeah. he def absolutely defined that band, no doubt. Yeah. No well, doubt. And he was probably the one with he got a per percussion on there, and they probably, you know, they had to probably th think twice about percussion. What are you going to play the hurdy gurdy on a Motorhead song? What do you mean? You, gonna, you know, yeah, we need some auxiliary, man. Let's just get this stuff to stick out, and it fucking worked. Absolutely, it was just enough polish. It was yes. just enough. Yes. And what about yes. that? I, I think a, a really un we've talked a lot about, you know, classic motorhead things. I think one of the non classic motorhead things, a little bit different for them, but very great in the uh, is the kind of breakdown quiet part, if you could call it that, of Chase is better than the catch. Bow, bow, bow. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, the little bass solo. Let me hear you. Yeah, yeah. A little, uh, and, and it quiets down. I think that's. I think uh, it's fantastic. almost like he's doing like a chant with the audience, like he's yeah. trying to create a, a vibe there. Yeah, and those little yeah. guitar solo fills that Eddie Clark is doing yeah. are so perfect. Little little <laughs> picking there. <laughs> Just yeah, I love that. Perfect phrasing. I can't hear ya. And it gets louder and, and comes up again like this crescendo. Yeah. Fantastic song. Yeah, every dynamics in a motorhead song. Who knew, right? Yeah. Every yeah. time I I uh listen to the record, still to this day, I hear new parts. Especially yep. on headphones. Yeah, I hear other guitar parts all over the place. Yeah. I was just doing that with ZZ Top the other day. I was listening to Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. I thought it was just that, you know, doom, doom, dun, dun, dun. there's three guitar parts going on in that song. I had no idea. Left, wow. center, right. Yeah. Two different parts. I was like, holy shit, listen to that. Yeah, that's like an Aerosmith. One yeah. of the old Aerosmith. Those guys are not playing the same thing, man. <laughs> Dude, yeah. it took me so long to be able to pick out the bass marimba on Sweet Emotion. I love finding that stuff on records. You're like, yeah. oh my God, did I just hear that? That's what that is. Yeah. No? So yeah, so with Motorhead, there's all sorts of weird. It's the it's the percussion stuff that you that's in to pick out because it's not you're not meant to notice it. It's just supposed to augment it, you know. It's not supposed to be garlic. It's supposed to be you know. Well, when little... you think of when you think about shaga digga digga da fa 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 that's three parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No kidding. Overdub. That's three parts. There's somebody going. Eh, 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 and then there's a because it hangs out right it's right. overhanging and then you got because there's a rhythm underneath it again immediately on the one and then you've got this where where the little like soloy bits that are right, right. probably Same on the solo track that main riff in ace of spades there's a lot going on there too though. you know there's at least two parts main parts well, and people forget that live, it's just going to be Lem playing the rhythm section right. uh, when there's rhythm guitar on every song under a solo. And yeah. you know, Van Halen rarely d did that. Pantera, Pantera rarely did that. Uh, Black Black Sabbath did it a lot. Yeah, Purple yeah. didn't really do it. You had you had John Lord, who's kind of a rhythm player, but definitely. Yeah, you know, but it's not uh, guitar. Right, you know. I like that where the the kind of I I've always thought that is that the especially with uh, Pantera and I don't want to get too far off topic, but I think it's in uh, at the solo of Walk that the bottom feels like it's like the bottom just drops out of it, and then it's just bass and the drums with the solo over it. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're like exactly that. right. There's a lot of space there, but the cool thing is, um, is without that rhythm guitar, you can hear how how groovy the rhythm section is. Yeah. And you can, it's like, it's like, you know, you got your icing with the donut. It's like you got, you can taste everything that's happening on the Danish, right? Because that solo in walk is so melodic. You know, and it's boogie. It's, they're swinging again. Oh, okay. There's okay. this groovy swingy thing happening in that solo.
Yeah, they understood that better, I think, than any American metal band. They like Revolution yeah. is my name. The swing in that one is brutal because everyone forgets how to swing. It's just crazy, but they knew how to do it. You know, yeah, That's Van how. Halen. They were they were at the altar of Van Halen. Absolutely, and, talk and about a band the, uh, that's swinging the whole time. Everything that, that fucking hostile is like heard it on the X. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You get like that, you play gig after gig after gig after gig, and you just start to learn how to do it. I mean, what, what was what was Cowboys? Their fifth record, I think, fourth or fifth record. Yeah. Fourth, I first believe. for me, but yeah, yeah four, fourth, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Power but metal. There, you know, they knew what the fuck they were doing. Yeah, they had been the brothers had been you know working hard since birth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but back to the swing thing like, again. That Motorhead thing. I remember when Pete Gill was in the band. It's like okay, now yeah. the drumming's kind of precise and it's cool. But then when Filthy came back in 1916, I was like, oh right, that's how this sounds. You know, that's yeah, that's I think maybe a big reason why for me, um, as I mentioned, I I really like We Are Motorhead from 2000, and I really like Bastards from '93. But for me, the the last classic Motorhead album was 1916. Yeah. Maybe it was because of Filthy. That that sounded like how it, it had the, the groove. It had, I don't yeah. know, whatever. As an I'm so bad, baby, I don't care. It's a contender for my number one Motorhead song in their whole catalog. That yeah. album is fucking awesome, 1916. And Ramones is good, too, because Filthy's Oh, more yeah. Popular. he's a He knows how to play. Like like um, Pete Gill, I forget it's on Rock and Roll or Gas Matron. He essentially does the intro to a song. That is overkill. It's the same. Oh, that's the claw. claw. It is. You know what my claw is for. Yeah. Right. But it's does, it has yeah, none of, it has it's all precision. It has none of the groove of the intro to overkill, which has got a jump, 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 jump. It's got a swing to it. Even when he does, you know, nine hits of speed on you know on the live at Hammersmith thing, it's just like holy no, shit. So like, imagine, imagine turning around and going, What are you fucking doing, dude? You know. Holy shit, slow that down. I'm going to be a, a bad okay. Motorhead fan here. Is Pete Gills on Orgasmatron? Yeah. I think he, yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. He was, he was the only other drummer. Uh, and yeah. you had Filthy, and then you had Pete Gill, and then you had and, Filthy, and then you had Mickey. Yeah. And he, he also, Pete Gill also <laughs> played on the four new studio tracks that were on uh, No Remorse. Kill by death. Yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew that. Yeah. They they yeah. did a tour with Exciter and Merciful Fate in 1984, yeah. and I saw that tour, and so I got to see Pete Gill with Motorhead. So, yeah, I did too. That was the first time I saw Motorhead. I'm glad that we're talking about this because it just jarred that memory. Yeah, I, I no, didn't... no, it was no remorse tour. It was. Yeah, um, I was. I would have seen them with that. I think I probably saw them on that tour because my first thing was with Pete Gill for sure. Yeah. Okay. 84. Yep. So it would have been after I was in LA. So yeah, that makes sense. November, sure. of, November of '84. Wow. Where'd you see him? San Antonio, Joe Freeman Coliseum, uh, Merciful Fate. No, first band, Exciter, Power Trio, Metal Band, Can Canada. Sure. Uh, yeah, Dan knows yeah, yeah. all about it. They uh, Dan DK is now in the band. Uh, uh, it was original lineup. Uh, they were touring Violence and Force. They. Yeah. Uh, they long live the loud i think was after that but anyway they were first in merciful fate with don't break the oath oh they were touring don't break the oath and um uh, and then motorhead was no remorse so i was a big saxon guy so see, getting to see pete gill because i i had seen saxon already a couple years prior but they had nigel glockler i still have nigel so uh i'd never got to see pete ever again i saw pete with that was the swan song, yep, that was it. There's a famous story of him getting fired because he wouldn't come out of the lobby. He was reading the newspaper and they're waiting for him on the bus, and he just he just took taking a sweet time, you know, to go do bus call, and then he was like, "That's enough of that. You're fired." Right. Mm -hmm. Can't can't just. All right, let's. Uh, we, we got yeah. one last one, and uh, it's called. It's not called the hammer. It's called the hammer. The and hammer. this is my favorite Motorhead song on on Ace of Spades. This is. Uh, Oh my God, I, I can't say. And you know what? I'll, I'll give Jason a little bit of a nod to this. You know, Broken Teeth did, uh, did the hammer on um, Bulldozer. And yeah. I, I always liked the hammer, but it was, it was Broken Teeth's version that made me realize, holy shit, this song is way better than I already thought it was. Um, 
yeah, oh, the hammer is just again. That's classic Motorhead. It's fast. It's uh, uh, it's 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 not quite violent, but it's it's vicious. Uh, uh, anyway, I was just sending a text to a buddy of mine. We were hanging out a couple uh, two weekends ago. We were all trying to come up with power trios. And when you guys said excited, I was like, oh, I got another one. I just texted it to him. Yeah. The other one I said before that was Brownsville Station. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. He just went, damn. I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, we were pulling out some good ones. But, yeah, some Danko. great metal. The Rods yeah. is another one. Yeah, Danko ah, Jones. The Rods. John, uh, John Kennedy? Kennedy? What's that guy's name? Carl. Uh, Carl. Carl. Carl Kennedy. Carl. Can Kennedy? Is that how you say it? Kennedy. Yeah. Kennedy. Kennedy yeah. yeah. Did you get Danko Jones? Power Trio? Yep. 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 We had, we had some good ones. I actually threw out, and, you know, it was a technicality, but it was right. I threw out Thin Lizzy. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, it no. Like, oh, yeah, take a look. It works, yeah. Yeah, we, we were doing that game for about, about an hour and a half at dinner. Here's Just, one for you, Wolf. A band called Wolf. Wow. I had Wolf Mother. I threw that one in. Yeah. There's another band just called Wolf that's a power trio. I didn't know. Uh, I, I, I love the hammer. I think – um the uh the broken teeth version it was it was fun for us to do but you you can't beat it was almost like well you know if you don't think that you can do justice to it why are you doing it because it's fucking fun you yeah, know right. to whoever would challenge you for that it's fun i love the song why wouldn't i want to have fun with my friends and cover one of my favorite motorhead songs right so eat a dick the main thing uh, that I'm trying to get across with this rant is <laughs> you're right. The, the hammer is a great uh, sort of like crystal ball into the metal of Motorhead, but this still swings and fits. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, but I it's very metal. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also the attitude that, is very metal. Speed yeah, metal. And that also that, that if they've got that great guitar sound again, just like the chase of the cats. Da -na 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 -na. Let the killer go. Don't let your mother know. Don't go out tonight. Don't even try to fight. Cause I can see your, I'm on, to, uh, I can see, uh, and I'm here to say it's going to be that way. Da -na 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 -na. Oh, that song is, that's, that's even a contender for one of my, you know, that's it. That's maybe in my top five motorhead songs ever. I fucking love the hammer. Yeah, that's a great one. I, and I was, what surprised me with that one, when at least on, I think it's, it's on Hammersmith, they don't go right into it. You know, they stop and wait and then introduce it. That one always seems to be the perfect. Um, he dedicates it to, to Filthy, right? This one's dedicated to yeah. Filthy Taylor. Yeah, to Phil Taylor. Uh, but it seems like that would be, you know, you hear the crescendo from the last, I don't know the crescendo, but the, the whole thing, and then bam, bam, and again, that, they go right into it. You know, this song needs no introduction. Just hit, hit everyone in the head with and, it. Go. And speaking of crescendo, I love the way it ends. The a little bit, not quite spoken word, but um, there ain't no way you'll see another day yeah. shooting out your life. I, and it, he just kind of your and your eternal tricks begin to make me sick. The only thing I know is that you've got to go. It just kind of builds up like that, and it goes yeah. back into it. Oh, what a fucking killer! Yeah, song that's that. classic blues break, breakdown for you. Yep, I would never know that. Yeah, yep. you minimal you minimalize, but you're literally playing the same song. The same parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You minimalize. You 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 let off the gas. You're not losing any momentum. Your velocity has changed. Yeah, right. You're exactly. getting under the skin a little bit, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, oh, what's about to fucking happen? Yeah. It's you're cr you're cranking the crank on a jack in the box. <laughs> ah, that's you're a, anticipating oh, that's a great something yeah. to explode. What was that? I said inappropriate, considering you know. Yeah, sure. It's a great yeah, analogy a good, for a lot of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Uh, but you're right. <laughs> That's the same thing in um, Chase has been in the catch. Same thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, that it, uh, you know, that kind of. Let me hear you. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. little bass solo. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then one that's kind of in your face is uh, Ace of Spades because it stops. And that's kind of spoken word esque, you know. Um, yeah. but oh, yeah. you know, I'm born to lose. Yeah. Bomb, bomb. Bam, bam. I mean, it's it's breaking it down. It's still, you know, 110 decibels, but it's still, you know, like you said, letting the gas off just a hair, you know, almost like opening the window a little bit at 80 miles an hour, just cool it down a little bit, and then just, oh no, fucking put it back on the floor, you know, and off you go. Yes. All right. Well, that's it. We made it through uh, this beautiful. Uh, slab what a, what a and as i said it's not my favorite motorhead album but i i do love it very let much. me see the back of yours here's the back of mine 
Oh, totally, totally different. Yeah, that's what's on back of mine. Dan's. Yeah. Yeah, this is how I've always really recalled different. it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that that was on, I think, the inside sleeve. You could be right. I, but what what does your inside sleeve look like, Jason? It's just a clear plastic. Ah, this has got yeah, I don't uh, I don't have that. The lyrics. Yeah, I think originally both, both they did not have the lyrics. No, I th I think I think Motorhead didn't have lyrics until well, <laughs> as I said, uh Another Perfect Day was my first. That that um uh, No Remorse did, which is kind of unusual for a compilation yeah, I, album to have I lyrics. That, I think that those versions that you have, and I'm not dogging you guys out, a record is a record, but I think that uh, it's market research that made them change the the track, the running order, mm -hmm. uh, to start the record with Ace of Spades, which makes sense. And they got to put Chase makes somewhere. Perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh yeah, testing the waters a little bit, kind of thing. It's it's very interesting. You know, we kind of started this whole conversation with the idea of how dare them? Why would they do that? Oh my God! What yours looks funny, Jason? You know, and I, I get it. I get it. But I, it's hard I, uh, to research. Yeah, I always thought, or at least until I was old enough to think about this stuff, that um, "Got to Choose" was a strange opener for "Hotter Than Hell." Wow, it is kind of yeah. I love it. It's a great song, but it's uh, same with Chase is better than the catch. It, it seems like a strange choice to open. You would have thought the title track would have been better. I don't know, but I would have I, thought like I feel watching like, you or I feel like maybe? something that kind of like draggy, kind of like kind of groovy. As they, they they may have yeah they may have felt like it was gonna come off like a T Rex thing or something. You know, yep. but it had like a disco, had the BG, woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, know. Stones, too. So very Motown, Rolling Stones kind of vibe. And I feel like they were counting on that for some airplay. It didn't work. <laughs> they were counting to get some fruit on the tree with that, and it didn't work. All right, so here's – I got a question for the class then. Right. We're talking about Kiss and, you know, there are these influences. We pull out, you know, One song, boom, 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 we had a bunch. Who who does that for Motorhead? Who can you sit there and go, okay, they sound like this or like this, like even in the, in the players? Because a lot of it, you kind of dig and you go, okay, the old rock and roll is kind of there. You know, the punk thing is kind of there, but they don't really sound like, oh, my God, um, you can totally hear, like you said, T-Rex, or you can hear Deep Purple, or you can hear Zeppelin. You don't hear any of that. So, like, where do you think, if they have an obvious influence, what would it be? The, I know the, the old rock and roll, though, I like we said it, earlier. Yeah, Little Richard and, and Chuck, Berry. Uh, Chuck Berry, but uh, but also Beatles and Hendrix and blues. Lots of probably, I, I wouldn't be able to name you specific, you know, names of blues artists, but probably American blues. Yeah, because, I mean, Capricorn certainly feels like that. Yeah. And so does Metropolis. Well, and Lawman and those kind of like, <laughs> kind of just kind of you know yeah. they had a lot of that going on in those early records yeah they were probably trying to be kind of a blues band and then you know when they play fast it's like bomber and then like you said earlier even bomber on the live album it's like you know once you get a couple of drinks in you and a couple of whatevers you're playing bomber at light speed <laughs> Yes, you are. The first first time I ever heard Bomber was on No Remorse, the live version. I didn't really like that much. Then when I got uh, okay. the record Bomber, I thought this is way better. It's the opposite of Kiss. You know, usually almost we talked about this last year. Yeah. Um, I I thought uh, I I think the I think Bomber is too fast on on Hammerstein. Okay. Well, the, the I know live, some people love it. The live record, much like uh priest unleashed in the east those songs a lot of that stuff i was introduced to you know the live record mm -hmm. oh yeah i i love fog hat live the feel of the tunes is completely different and that goes to show it goes the same Ooh. with skinner with, uh, yeah 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 all that stuff uh it's uh, easy live record that's live side on fandango oh my god i mean they're just unbelievable you, you, that's the cream. That's the cream right there. That's like, like backdoor love affair and just a whole. They just turn that into a uh, a magnum opus, in my opinion. It's just like 
that could have been that's like as good as double live gonzo and any rap that paul does on kiss alive yeah oh yeah, that, that section is unbelievable yeah yeah and yeah. and frank beard is like a thrash drummer on that <laughs> yeah. that's whole, serious for, for, shit. 10, for 10 minutes he's just thrashing yeah and it's unbelievable but yeah, you're right. So many of those live records, that, uh, the, the live version was the first I heard. And then you go back and listen to the studio, like, eh, yeah. like with the kids stuff, I remember going, hmm. Tired. It's alive. You know? Sounds tired. Yeah. Yeah. But on a live, it's completely kicks out. Cheap Trick of Budokan, another great example. Same thing. Yeah. So your it's live really version awesome. has, has the correct energy. And I have this theory about, and Broken Teeth tried this on a couple of records, and I won't go into the history of it, but where we would write at least half the record and put those new songs in the set and play them live and clock our live version and use that tempo in the studio. Huh. Because oh, that's way where way. we're going to want to play it anyway, naturally, and then right. use that tempo on the metronome on the click that, track. That is, the is that, does that explain why all the, <laughs> the, the, whatever six songs it was that were re-recorded for electric, why they were so much faster? Definitely. Much faster. Definitely. Whereas but, Sion, we went out for Devil in Details rehearsing probably about four or five songs. So we did the same thing to get the parts together and get it right. I think we, we stayed the same on most of them uh, tempo-wise. There might have been one that came up. But yeah, our idea was, you know, from all our favorite bands, they had played that stuff for so long in the clubs, they had them down to the science by the time they went to hit record in the studio. So, I mean, we always... That's what why they. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's that's why they say your first album is easy. You already have it all worked out because yeah. you played it live for at least a year, yep. right? Yep. yep so yep. it's easy. But then, okay, we got another record. Six months later, you got another record. It's like what? <laughs> right. What? So we learned by the third record, we learned. Okay, let's go out and then play this shit for four or five months, and we did. And it, sometimes it, it, you don't have time, though. Yeah, we did. On. We were between deals, so we were we we could do that. Smart, yeah, in a but, way. But between water and and uh, lizard, oh, we <laughs> we didn't have shit. We walked in that studio with one demo. That's yeah. it. Nothing was written. Wow. Whoopsie. Yeah. Right, well, I'll, I'll take I'll take this little break to to wrap it up. At least for the for the YouTube portion of this, we the three of us can kiss each other goodbye when uh, when 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 we wrap this up. Thank you to, to Jason and Chris for joining me today. What a great thing it is in life to talk about music. No, I can't imagine what it would be like to play it. I can only dream about that. But thank you uh, guys for your time and for the however many people that, that uh, watch. Thank you. I appreciate it. Long. I hope you got something out of it and learned something. And um, Motorhead, one of my top, top, top bands ever. A pleasure to talk about them. A last thing. Any, anything you guys want to plug uh, before, we, before we cut it off? Jason, I know, is very busy coming up. Yeah, um, we got asked, my, my band prior to Dangerous Toys, and some of you, you know, even think Dangerous Toys broke up after the second record, which I can't yell at you uh, too much and say how wrong you are, but <laughs> uh, we're still alive and we still play and we play new songs in our set. Uh, but the band prior to Dangerous Toys, I joined in 1982, a band called Watchtower uh, got asked to play uh, a reunion show next year uh, at a festival, and um, we accepted. And then the word got out, and uh, Oliver from Keep It True in Germany called and said, "Well, you're doing it there. You got to do it over here now." And we obliged, so we're going to we're going in October this year to do Keep It True. And then um, when when those two things happen, well, we have to do some warm up shows around here. And Texas uh, loves having Watchtower here because uh, it was kind of phenomenon a phenomenon for a few short years. And uh, and the the first show down in San Antonio sold out in three days. And then uh, we added an Austin show, which is in January uh, 24, which will be the last. Uh, the date is January 5th here in Austin, and I'm, I'm imagining that people will probably be traveling, flying from other countries oh, yeah. to, to see Watchtower play in the hometown 
show. And that venue is a bigger venue. I don't think it'll sell out. But that's what's going on with that. Um, and then Dirty Looks has a show in Sealands Grove, PA, which is the band's stomping ground. So that's kind of like a pilgrimage that we've been doing every year for this will be our third year to do it. And that'll be just a blast to celebrate those tunes. I love those songs so much. I love both those records around Atlantic. Absolutely love them. Yeah. Yeah. Like every song, there's not a bad groove on it. It's so fun. Uh, Henrik was just a monster. And, Turn of the Screw, was that the first record? Turn of the Screw? Uh, well, there's there's two records before Cool from the Wire. Yeah, so Cool, cool from the wire. the wire is the first what I call domestic record mm -hmm. that people kind of know. It has O Ruby and and then so uh, and yeah, um, I put a spell on you and yeah, that's yeah, great. spell, yeah, spell is great. We open with that. Uh, I have a track rules. Yes, Cool from the Wire is like the hit. And then, uh, and Oh Ruby, people love Oh Ruby. We close with that. But then the second record, Turn of the Screw, the title track is great. Nobody Rides for Free was a, was a marginal hit on MTV. And, um, and then there's great Slam into the Big Beat is just so fucking good. Uh, there's a couple more on there that we do. But yeah, the set is made up of, it's, it's pretty much all of Cool from the Wire and then about six or seven from Screw. So looking forward to that. Um, other than that, the toys, like I said, we have a, we're playing in Denver on September 9th. We're playing, uh, these are random dates, October 21st. I can't believe I remember them. October 21st in, in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Uh, we're playing in Austin, August, uh, 19th. And then we're playing the whiskey in Hollywood, August 26th. And there's a few more that I'm, that I'm missing. Dangerous read all about it. Here's, here's a, a message that I sent. Do you guys, have you heard of a band called Rusty Eye? I have not. They're a, I guess they started in Mexico city in the late nineties and they moved to LA. They've done actually quite a few records. And uh, the singer is a friend of mine because he went to university with my with my wife years ago. And then years and years later, we discovered that we, you know, had a lot of other kind of mutual friends and things in common. And uh, there was a message that I had sent to him. He lives in L.A. <laughs> Far out. And I had asked him if he's going. And he said, uh, he says, uh, he says he's did debating. He said he might be doing some recording sometime around that date. But he says, I really want to go. So uh, I hope my friend Paul from Rusty Eye can go see Dangerous Toys. Cool. I like that band name. That's cool. It's, it's an it's awesome it's band name. No, right. I talked about them in a video a couple of months ago. And I said, that's like one of the great band names. Yeah. Rusty Eye is a fucking great name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for Chris, me, anything? Uh, still working the Canal Record, the first one. Um, so, uh, which is you know getting very it's it's you know jason I understand this where when you're doing your own thing man you gotta just pound on the doors because nobody cares but once you get them in and people are loving it something makes me very happy got all the drum tracks for the second one um about a week and a half ago half ago so starting to rebuild uh from the demos on that one get it that all done um waiting for guitar tracks uh lead guitar tracks for megaton otherwise megaton is done uh, which is a heavy kind of dino dio era sabbath one punk record is done and out on Bandcamp, and then the uh that's bronson avenue and then um been working with uh, roy kathy who was my singer in cold sweat he has a band called the fifth and uh, i'm going to be allegedly producing their record um they've uh I, I rag them all the time like you guys gotta get me songs come on write more write more write more and like you know so we're moving at kind of a snail's pace but um, I looked at uh, my phone before I hopped in on this, and they had just sent me the bunch of uh, uh, Pro Tools session for one of the songs to start get going. So nice, cool too. So yeah, a lot going on. And then there was one other thing that I had going, and I can't remember what it is. Oh, um, I'm writing. Uh, it wouldn't be a triptych; it'd be a quad. So it's four songs, um, and I'm gonna. It's like uh, it's all. Every song is an alcohol. So there's a song about gin that is not called gin there's a song about whiskey a song about bourbon and a song about rum so weird do you have a do you have, do you have a song about ishtabentun <laughs> i do not what is that it's a maya alcohol that's uh local to yucatan state that's uh yeah. quite popular it's uh 
like made from some sort of fermented fruit sort of thing? No, it's uh, it's it's honey, anise. It's, it's a strong one. It's like thirty five percent alcohol, I think forty percent, and it's uh, yeah, unique to uh, to Yucatan State in Mexico. It starts with the letter X, Ishtabentun. Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds vaguely German. It's Mayan. <laughs> I'll, I will have to look that up. That could be some interesting backstory, to say the least. Well, I'll, I'll try to wrap it up again. Thank you, guys, and uh, good that, that everybody is still. I have nothing to promote, unfortunately. Good to uh, see you, anyway. Yeah, you're always great. Always good Dan. to see you guys. We, and, we love uh, you, man. Thank yes. you, and it, it's great that you guys are still so you know, you know, active in, in music, and uh, you know, it wasn't just as people probably told you when you were younger. It's a fad; you'll grow out of it. You'll grow out. Good, good to see that you guys have not grown out of it. Well, it's and, like uh, a painter. You. It's like a painter. Does a painter stop painting? No. It's, yeah, uh, or golfers. How do you retire yeah, from golf? It's not, right? Yeah, it's no, not. Um, no. It's who you are. Yeah. But uh, thank you for anybody who watched it. If you made it through all, it's been, what, about two hours. If you made it yeah. through this whole thing, you're a very remarkable person. Yes. So thank you. And uh, I hope somebody got something out of this. Thank you again to Chris and Jason. We'll do this again sometime with something else. I don't know what band or what <laughs> album, but uh, good to do this every once in a while. Thank you to both of you, and thanks for watching. That's all. See ya.